The community was stunned by Chubby's conviction. His brother Cedric and Jeff, his closest friend, were shocked by the outcome. I don't know. Really dumb. How do you feel about it? I'm upset. But what could I do? I don't know. I don't think that, I don't think this for any reasons whatsoever that he should have got what he got for no reason because in the first place he did not spit in the officer's face. I was there when when this thing went down, eh? I didn't see him spit on spit in the policeman's face. Nobody else saw him. There was a lot of people, there's a lot of people in the arcade. Nobody else saw him spit in anybody's face. The cops just harassed him, took him, shoved him into the back of a car, and took him down to the station and charged him. And that's how that's how that's how everything goes around here. From the, from they pick you up and you get to the station, if they're not beating you up, they're laying some kind of charge on you. I've been around this stuff before I right? London, and I've seen all of this happen before. I like, I feel, I, I strongly feel, if somebody doesn't come up and say something, right? And people don't start expressing themselves. They're gonna have a lot. They're gonna have a lot of trouble on their hands with black people in this community alone, because you can't you can't just go around harassing people like that and expecting them to take it every day of their lives. The whole court business today, I think, I feel was ridiculous. It's like the judge wasn't listening to anything that me or Chubby or anybody else had to say. All he all he wanted to all he wanted to do is get his example, as he put it. Chubby's lawyer asked the judge, like, seeing that he's working and he's holding a steady job right now, if something could be done so he could keep his job, right? The lawyer just, that the judge just, um, well, no, I don't think so. From what I've seen, I, I don't think he's going to reform. And, um, like, to say, like, hey, I don't want to hear nothing else about this case. Let's just forget it. And that was it. Nothing else could be said, right? That I think, well, hey, the man's working. It's not, it's not as if he was like, like just loafing around, walking the streets, right? They're always telling people, well, hey, get a job, right? Do something. He's got a job. He's doing something. And still, when they ask, when when you go to court and you ask a judge, well, can something be done for this man to keep his job? They'll be telling you no, right? What's the sense, man? The guys. Yeah, would you do me a favor? There's no cars available. I've already promised myself, right, that, like, I'm not gonna bring up my son here. Right now, I'm just trying to get my life together and, like, move to somewhere else, right? Doesn't matter where, it's just some place out of chain of French, right? Because like if he's if I if I try and bring him up here, I feel he'll grow up and the same things are gonna be happening to him and I don't want that for my kid. I was like when I was about eleven, eleven or twelve. And it just progressed throughout the years. And let's just say in nineteen eighty eight is where I really, really got serious and I took it as a business and uh, hooked up with my manager, and you know, we, did, we distributed demo tapes uh, throughout Canada, throughout the States. Why, why did you get serious? Why? Because, like, I always thought I was serious about it, right? But then, it's like, no one from Canada has really been successful, rap artists from Canada has really been that successful yet, so we must have been doing something wrong or maybe the Canadian music industry wasn't really opening their eyes or, or whatever, so, we just said, we're taking no prisoners, we, we're doing everything, we can demo tapes. I even did my own video, like, we made this video for about five grand. And you know, we did our own video, a demo video, and we just shipped it around to, to record companies and whatnot in the States and Canada. And we did as much as we can, photo sessions, everything, you know? And uh, to say, if, if I, you know, to say, I got to do it somehow, so let me, let's just try all channels possible type of thing. So it worked. But did it work in the, in the States first? 
Well, indirectly, because I was on Electric Circus, and my record company, to be, just happened to be in Toronto at the time. I'm on LMR Records in New York. And uh, they liked what they heard. They picked me up. And uh, next thing I know, I got a record contract, a record deal. And the record's been progressing throughout you know, Canada, throughout the States. Uh, Attic Records in Canada licensed me. So is it good for you to be in Canada now? Or are you just moving fast south? Well, you know, it's my main market, of course, I'd, I'd be a liar if I said it's not, but my main market is the States because that's where, or England, because that's where rap is large. But at the same time, it's good to, to realize that uh, Canadians, you know, you know, appreciate, you know, appreciate my style and what I'm about. Because right now I'm touring with Young MC throughout Canada. We just went out west to Alberta, Vancouver. And the shows have just been selling out. So obviously. And you've been mobbed. I mean, people, I mean, they can't fit into the malls. There are like 7,000 young women coming to see you. Well, you know, I must be doing something right. You know, it comes with the territory. Do you think uh, um, rap's popularity has peaked? If it's at its peak? Yeah. I'd say probably by 90, end of 91, it'll be at its peak. I think so. Because uh, me getting signed, let's just say, I mean, okay, you have rap in the States, England, Europe. It's large, it's really large, right? So now Canada, I'm the first rap artist from Canada to release an album on a US label, or let's just say to release an album of that magnitude, Symphony in Effect. So what's gonna happen now, hopefully, is I've inspired, let's say, Canadian music industries to, uh, to uh, hook up Canadian rap artists. So maybe by 91, you'll see Canadian rap artists come out on Canadian labels. Do you like that? You like being a role model? Do you like the kids looking up to you or copying you? Well, I'm not really, a, uh, I don't look out for that. But it's good to know that people, I'm influencing people. You know? Well, you know, and people also are critical about the influence maybe rap artists have. They say yeah. some of their remarks are racist or yeah. um, anti-homosexual or, you know, public yeah. enemy's been accused of this. See, rap music is a link between reality and music. So I'm saying it's a state of mind that's going on. Like, it's almost singing, but it's not. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's almost singing, but it's not. And a lot of times they speak on reality issues of, you might not agree with everything Public Enemy or NWA says, but it's a state of mind of, let's say, a consensus of what certain people believe, right? Just like, you know, guns and And you roses. can accept that. You just say Yeah. That. Like, I like Public Enemy. I like NWA. But that doesn't mean I agree with everything that they're saying. So how do you do it? I mean, it, it sounds so corny for me to say. You listen to rap music, uh, and I just go, where'd you come up with that? How do you make the rhyme? And what, how does the process work? Depends how intricate the song is, what it's about, you know. Let your backbone slide is a party rap. I made that for, let's say, a party, like a party dance funk type of groove, right? So I said to myself, I'm going to do the best party rap I can. And I came up with the hook, Let Your Backbone Slide. And everything just came from what revolved around there type of thing. I got the hook, Let Your Backbone Slide. That was going to be the, the and hook. And it's all written out, and you've memorized it? Yeah, that's the business, you know. You got to <laughs> memorize it, you know what I mean? You got to memorize what you it's do. It's a lot to memorize. You do, hey, you know, like Hamlet. You have a lot to memorize. Do your job. You know, I got a lot to memorize. Do mine. You know what I mean? So what Cameron happens? Man has a lot to yeah. memorize. You know. So you ride this crest. I mean, you got a year of political science under your belt. Yeah. You may end up in any kind of business, but. Well, like I said, you know, right now the business, my business is Maestro Fresh West, and I don't know how long I'll be, you know, how long you'll be interviewing me, or I'll be at Global Mail or The Sun or Star or whatever. But I'm gonna see. I'm gonna do. Do it, do it, be myself type of thing, you know what I mean? So like they say in rap, you know, as long as you don't go out and be the sucker, be yourself, you know what I mean? And uh, I'll, see, I'll see how far it takes me. Good luck at the Junos. Yeah, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. <laughs> thanks, Maestro. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I mean, it's hot off the grill, yo. It's hot. <laughs> We're cooking everything inside. You're hot, he's hot, the camera's hot, I'm hot, they're hot. Everything's fried up inside. Hot. Hot, very hot. It's hot in there. The realization of the fact is clear. The TV did like me, why the hell was I in there? A well-planned smile and the figure they could buy out. A brother like me, what a basketball team try out. Canadian music industry, this project that has just been released tonight here at the Rivoli. Uh, what can I say is the uh, added co-front compilation. It's uh, generally a Canadian rap compilation that's focusing in Toronto first. Uh, we got like six out uh, five signed artists and five, actually uh, seven unsigned artists. 
and uh, it's just like real, it's straight up rap music, you know, it's not like hip house, it's not mainstream rap music, it's straight up rap music that really collects the different identities of rap music in a whole, so, you know, we got groups like New Black Nation, a girl group on uh, bass poet, the funky Namaco brother, um, maestro, main source, the funky side, the hard side, the soul side, so, you know, because it's well-rounded, well-rounded, we got, this represents the true validity of Canadian or Toronto rap music. And it's gonna it's gonna reach everyone in the hole. It's coming out, it's coming out the bushes as they say. I woke up this morning to eat some rice krispies. Now I crack a pop, all tried to diss me. I got mad, I couldn't take it no more. Put on my rope chain and headed for the door. And it's good like to have like a, a true, honestly good rap music album, especially at a time where like the music industry is being whitewashed. Not white well not whitewashed, but being like watered down a lot. But, like a lot of mainstream rap records. A lot of people trying to get over making cheap, simple rap records with nothing going on, you know. And it, it teaches youth the wrong things, you know. So this album has got a lot to say, you know, and it, it comes off correct each and every single time, or each track. <laughs> okay, now the stuff being the real shit. Is it going to get airplay on radio? Uh, that wasn't a major concern, getting radio airplay. That wasn't a concern at all. We weren't really concerned about commercial radio shows, but we know, like, we, we were concerned that serious radio shows, you know, serious radio shows, serious rap shows would play, you know, rap shows in England, in the States, you know, even in Canada, like, the college radios, they'd be breaking it out all the time. We weren't really concerned, like, with, like, the, like, uh, commercial radio stations in Canada. You know, that wasn't the main focus. The main focus was the music, you know, and, 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 and the kids that came up and put their music on for this album. That was the major concern. Yo, what's up? How nice of you to drop in? I just think, you know what I'm saying? Now I'm popping. The party's hopping. I think we should stop it. Yeah, yeah. I got to spell all the audience. Need more underground yeah. bands coming out. They're there because we know them. They live in our neighborhoods, you know? They're coming out. Why cold front? Uh, it was a joke. I remember like back in March when it was like cold and it was like snow. I was taking the bus to go to work at Attic and I was like, damn man, it's, it's cold outside. So like, you know, you, you know, you turn on like, you know, the Buffalo stations, the television and go like, and there's a Canadian cold front moving in. And it's just like that. We're a Canadian cold front moving in. You know, we're, we're a movement, we're a rap movement that's moving into all markets. European, American. Because you know, if it wasn't for the Dream Warriors or Maestro and Miss You Me, you know, that's all be sent for Canada. But now there's a whole lot of artists that people know about and Canada's got its own distinct style when it comes to rap music so the cold front's moving in everywhere 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 I think it's, it's something coming it's getting more and more popular I think New York uh, MCs and rappers and stuff are starting to respect Toronto MCs a lot more like you know before they used to distance and stuff but now they're like pumping us up and trying to get us down I think the Toronto crowd has to start respecting the um, Toronto DJs and MCs the same way, you know what I mean? But I think it's coming up. It's getting live and live and it's spreading big. The two funky number club in. What's up? From the neighborhood. Funk you, you know. I sit. And we, we all dancing and we've been practicing for years going around community centers, all areas, region, jungles, Scarborough, everywhere. Doing uh, positive stuff about drugs and, and black awareness and, and stuff like that, educating the young ones, right? And then we said, all right, my man John Browski said, you drop some stuff, so we dropped some stuff. And he liked it. His ear was plugged to it, so that's about it. Barbecue really boils down. It boils down. It boils down. It heats up to being like a, an honest to goodness hip hop jam. No reggae, no funk, no R and B. Just straight up rap records. You know, a little like lingo fringo on the mic, and that's what it's all about. You know, brothers get off. Like this is what I grew up on. This is why you know I'm a, you know I'm a living breeder of I'm I'm a, I'm, I'm a living entity of rap music, and it's because of boogies like this when I was a kid that I really got into rap music. So I'm hoping that you know there's at least one or two brothers out there. Going, Wow, this is this is what I'm about. This is what I want to get into. So this is why we have the barbecue. This is the third one. We're gonna make many more. And everyone around the country, you have barbecues all over, man. Yellow knife, have a barbecue, man. Everywhere, Calgary, have a barbecue. Get it on. Get it together. Put it out. Let's kick it one more time. Now let's first talk about this warning sticker that's on your album. Oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> you know how I feel about this type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did that happen? Um, well, when it comes to rap music, sometimes. Certain things come out that, let's say, your record company feels might be inappropriate for certain record buyers, you know what I mean? But I mean, that's rap music. When kids see that, you know, like, tem something in the back of their head, like, hmm, I want to know what's in there, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's true. So, you know. It's almost like a cool. selling point. Yeah, it's plus rap, rap music is reality, man. It's just about, you know, what's really going on right now, so. Maestro insists that if you're going to rap, it's got to be about something you really know firsthand. Otherwise, you risk sounding completely phony. What I try to do in my album is incorporate reality of what I've experienced in my life, what I've seen, and what I'm seeing right now, and put it on my album. 
I didn't uh, perpetrate go on like I'm from New York or, or like Bronx or Compton or whatever. I'm from Toronto. I got problems I got to overcome and I'm trying to overcome those problems as well. Some of those problems are described on Maestro's second single titled Nothing at All. The native man of the land is who you're killing and they've got the nerve to celebrate Thanksgiving. Framing every man is equal. I hate to see what y'all got planned for my people. It's bas basically uh, talking about uh, being black in Canada you know, as opposed to being black in, in America type of thing. So it's really, I think the song will be um, really effective because it's, uh, it's really personal. My first album, I had 35 radio stations in the country, major radio stations playing my stuff. Now I've got six radio stations across the country playing my stuff. And I have grown in popularity. So as f it forces me to think they're just trying to cut down like black music because how can somebody still win a most popular video award People's Choice, meaning people voting in for you. That's what the people want to hear, and it'll only be played on five radio stations. The music is just continuing, just continuing, and it's just progressing all the time. You know what I mean? And it's like, I'll be around for a while, you know? Yeah. I got fans supporting me, and you know. Do you have to change with the times? You gotta progress with the times, you know what I mean? You gotta, you gotta move on, you know? You can't just stay, you can't stagnate type. Your Midnight Marauders, your, your pirate radio station, the City Wonderland, Master Plan Show, which is how we do it here at 89.5. Coming straight, straight, straight up. You know we start at 8.30 and not gonna go away. We wanna tell you what we played, what we're coming up with a little bit later on. You know this is Hip Hop Saturday Night Live. What are we gonna play later with on? With Motion and John Bronski. When you talk about rap music, you have to talk about hip hop culture. And hip hop culture is, uh... Hip hop is music. It's not based on color or sex. It's based on skills. Hip-hop is fashion. Afros, pumas. Hip-hop is dance. Breaking, graffiti, DJing. Hip-hop is language. Rapping. Hip-hop is poetry. Drinking beer, smoking weed, all of that. Hip-hop is strength. The cream would truly rise to the top. I was a little bit apprehensive about doing a rap show, a 90-minute rap show and cartoning a lot of gear and stuff mm -hmm. and turntables, so I didn't think it was worth yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely, it was two different flavors that came about because, like, first of all, John had had roots in in, in the radio, in, in media, and, like, me, myself, and Power, we had roots in performing. You know, when when I first came down here, I had never used the cart machine. You know what I mean? Never really talked on a radio mic before. And they just said, okay, go on Saturday. And I'm sitting in front of, you know, the soundboard. And I'm like, okay, so what am I supposed to do with this now? Okay, just play the music. Just play the music. It was very nerve-wracking, you know. But it's just, I think somebody just came up to and saw me at a performance and said, yo, you know, why don't you try doing this? Why don't you, why don't you do a radio show? And also be cool because if we have a female, black female who's, who, who's doing a radio show, hip hop, you know, they, they, what a concept. And I guess I didn't really think of it as a concept. I was thinking about was just doing a good show. It has to come off totally, totally live. You know, we're trying to keep the same type of flavor that hip hop started with, which is two turntables and a microphone. And a mixer, of course. Mm-hmm. You see, Mercury Records, John Brasky. What is John Brosky, by the way, for the benefit of people who may not know? Well, what happened was, this is record called Jim Brosky. It's a bunch of dick, right? And Jimmy's so big, we need a U-Haul to haul it. So, uh, it's by the Jungle Brothers. And it's saying how, don't mess with the Jimmy, the dick, or you get fucked up, right? You mess with the dick, you get fucked up, right? So, um, Jason still was a d who used to be a, an editor here. Thought that was the best way to describe my personality. So, I became John Brodsky. It's the Wild Key, man. MVP, check it out, check it out. LC. What's up? This is the Simo. What's up? Yo, can't forget the man Saps, man. Gotta get him on the camera. So, who's Saps? Saps, Saps man. Buddy? Saps, one of my DJs, man. Yeah. You know, we chill and do sh what, some shit DJs? together, you know? Oh, yeah. well, I don't have a lot of DJs, but he's my How main DJ. <laughs> I don't have a lot, man. This How is many? One, man. Okay, one. Stop. So I was just wondering why I'm asking. Farley Flex. Yeah, my name is Danny O. Just catching my breath from running here from the bus stop. <laughs> because my boys couldn't be here, we're part of the Lyrical Coalition, which is our family here in Toronto. MVP's down with it. There's other groups, including myself and my group partners in rhyme. We got Have a Best in Play, Black with Charisma, the X-Men, Psycho Section. Of course, MVP, like I said, 
And that's all part of the family, the relatives, as Farley was saying, about, you know, the hip-hop nation here in Toronto. Why do all rap performers have nicknames or pseudonyms? I just think it's like, you know, kind of too plain, you know, because my name is Courtney, and I mean, saying my name is Courtney on the microphone is just kind of too plain and lame. It's all you know? about Flav. People surprised to hear when nigga Simo kicks the realisticness Kick the shit when I flip the shit So check it out, it's the nigga Simo known as Canis Loop It's cool the words I got to do with some that's the way I rule it I rule it, I rule it, I kick it, I flip it Some shit like that, but anyway, you know I got to rip it we got, we got influenced by, you know, artists like uh, Maestro and so forth And um, Big Daddy Kane Maestro started it yeah, up, but it's Ma all Maestro was the real one yeah. that really warmed us up and influenced us, you know It was from Maestro, other kids couldn't think they could do it And Maestro really yeah. started it up in Canada here Man. Roughly back in 88, late 88, early 89, uh, when I was coming back from university, like at spring break and stuff, I worked at a place called Wizards, and that's where I first met uh, Wesley, Maestro Fresh West. He was a chicken wing cook, and I was a bouncer at the door, and uh, so we struck a friendship before um, we actually entered into a business, and, like management artist relationship, right? You know, you, you always need example, or you need precedence to, I guess, motivate you sometimes, and there was no real precedence uh, for Wes. He was one of the first, you know, Mishimi was out, and we recognized, uh, she was actually one of the motivating factors for him wanting to be, uh, you know, enter the professional form. You mean when we used to wear shorts and suits and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll go into well, that. MVP started... That's before I existed, okay? Kind of R&B, like, man, uh, we started out, you know, I, I'd say whack, but we took a wrong turn. <laughs> and we didn't know, you know, we thought, like, show business, as long as we can get in, might as well just take the chance. So what happened was, after we found out that, you know, this isn't the right way, we hooked up with Farley Flex right here, man in Toronto, and um, we just started <clears> doing some stuff, you know, and... Uh, Right now, this is how it's going, man. Living fat, MVP, man. Ron just, shit, everything's fat, man. Yeah, yeah. Hey, this is the Blackest Music family. We got T-Soul, Gogo, Motion, Full Step, Fury, Howie T, Rugged Man, my man Roxy, over there, chill. We started way, way, way back, just making music on, um, with nothing, you know what I mean? Like, on turntables that didn't have any pitch, using earphones for mics, you know, using like a little Casio keyboard for try to try to make our own, you know, um, our own samples and our own bass lines and just doing it all on tape. So we used to just do it on tape, try to make, uh, like, use it like a chat machine, going back and forth, back and forth. So we really just started off with the bare essence of little just because we loved hip hop. I think that a lot of our focus has been to um, politically educate the youth. It's not just song and death. But we have conscious lyrics, and we want to say, you know, with whatever we rap about, we want to, you know, portray that. We want to have that connection with our audience and ourselves. When the music was kicking back in the day, the media wasn't paying no attention to it. But now that it's more mainstream, like the hardcore shit is now coming mainstream. Like you have like what they call gangster rap, which is like. It's a media label, like, they call it, that's become a mainstream, like, you have, like, artists like Snoop, Ice Cube, it's hitting a whole bunch of people, you know, like, crossing over and shit, and now that the white kids are listening to it, they don't like that. They don't like, you know, hearing black expression. The commercialization of hip-hop and the negative, stereotypical portrayal of hip-hop, I think, are very much intertwined because it seems that mainstream society likes to create fear around certain things, things that they cannot understand, and yeah, therefore, may, then, then the mainstream also can sort of feed off that fear and get, like, um, fascinated by it, like, you know, intrigued by it. Let me see what this is all about. Let me see what these black people are about. What are these b-boys all about? And even though they can't understand it, it's just the mystery and the danger that's, that, that, that's um, surrounding it because of the media hype that people want to buy it more you know, young kids from the suburbs or whatever who don't know anything about hip-hop except for now that they're listening to it you know what I mean they it's just a uh, fascination with abomination the ghetto ghetto <laughs> ghetto concept in the house quadro swing low represent you know quadro from the ghetto concept Sid yeah Rex Dell oh yo okay who else is in the house Yo, this is Madlock from the Warlocks crew, bigging up the Rexdale City. Sit. Peace out. See. Roach Clip from Urban Calvary crew, Rexdale's where it's at. Believe it, buddy. <laughs> the one they call Manche, the Mancherian warrior known as the Black Dillinger, representing the Warlocks. See. See. And the Diamond X crew. Just forgot me. Where's the man? 
Right here. Right here. Where am I? skills. Lyrical dog got jelly stone represented from the orb one third. Peace. Sky juice lens. For, real. For all those who Speak don't up. know. So what's up with uh, hip hop music and Rex down? Ghetto concept. All right, let me go. Let me go. <clears throat> Word up. Right about now, we're inside Rexdale. You know that this is where I reside. This is a project that I live in and a little tour of the place, you know? I've lived here for seven years, since I was 12 years old. Orpington. Wow. Yeah. You're on the borderline between Jamestown and Orpington. Between, between Martin Grove. And you don't want to be here after uh, 9 o'clock at night, differently. You know what I'm saying? It's not good stuff. So what, what happened at uh, 9 o'clock tonight? <laughs> well, Boy, put it this way. Put it yeah. this way. If you're around here with the camera, <laughs> put it this way. You know, bow your camera. You know? like bow your camera. Don't even like to let us rap on the corner. You know what I'm saying? You're always going to bust up the place. Nobody. 5-0. 5-0. Mm. Beast Boys. Yeah. Mm. Much trouble with the 5-0? Yeah, they're always hassling us still, but you know? We're not even here to talk about those dickheads. Yeah, no. Fuck the police. Tricks. <laughs> Ghetto concept. Basically, it was me and two other people before before I met Swing, and basically it's just the vibe in Rexdale was really you know happening. Everybody's rapping. Everybody's getting down. You know, so I just tried wanted to try my own thing and just true. I wanted to rap about things that I see every day. So that's the Ghetto concept. Ghetto ideas. Talking about everything that we see every day, and. Basically, it's like I just kept rapping for about, I must say, four years, and then it's a link up with Swing, and then we started doing the thing seriously, you know, like really serious, getting down, going to check Born Swift with some for the beats, and really doing shows. We did enough shows, still. What's going on? Too many shows. <laughs> Not too many, but yeah. We've been just chilling, you know. We've been on the download, just working on new material, you know, getting our album ready. Basically just chilling. We did a couple of shows. We did a show in Montreal. We did a show in Atlanta. Yeah, at Freak Fest. We did Freak a show Fest. in Atlanta. We were opening up. It was a bunch of other artists on there. R. Kelly, Queen Latifah, a bunch of other artists. Emotional. Just a little so, emotional show. And, and then they get away from the atmosphere. <laughs> All this. What about school? Everybody going to school? Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Got a school. Nah, man, not everybody, man. Everybody's working. <laughs> because that punk ass school system always <laughs> hitting against them black people. So it's so unbelievable, you know what I'm saying? Real. Yeah, so Real, you better believe man. that. Yeah, and the reason why <laughs> some of us use guns because you, you know, you guys are quick to shoot us down and all that shit, and we're not down with that, you know? Because we're human beings and we have human rights, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Ghetto concept. So how did you hook up with, uh, with Groove A Lot Records and Julian Arthur? Um, the way I hooked up with them is that through Born Swift, he was already hooked up with them because he's in a group Born to Rome. He was already hooked up with Julian and um, he was producing for me. So basically it's like I just went to a studio with them one day and I was rhyming and my man Julian said that send him a tape and I sent him a tape and he was down. He was with it and he just linked us up from that. When someone says hardcore. Hardcore to me. I don't know, just that. Just reality. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Just reality. going for yours, regardless of a record contract or whatever. Just kicking skills. Just just living the life. You know, just something that we do every day, no matter what. If yeah, we ain't getting paid for a show or what. It's just something that we love to do. And yeah. it's for real. That's hardcore for real. Everybody has a right to express their own views. You know what I'm saying? So... If a man wants to come out and say he's killing people, if he doesn't do it, that's not hardcore. Studio gangster. Studio gangster, exactly what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not hardcore. <laughs> Anything that real. comes to mind when you think yeah. of hardcore, Rex them, man. <laughs> trust me. Get up, yeah. trust me. Warlocks, Diamond X. Can't forget my man. My mom's just hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> I'm my ass when she's ready. That's what? hardcore. Basically, Rex still cruise we're down with still. Cause we weren't getting no pass before and it's like right now we're about to blow up. If Monet lived today and you listen to hip hop, you'd probably be doing graffiti, you know what I'm saying? Because this is what's influencing you. And it's real. You can come out here, get an aerosol can. It's you take something that everyone takes for granted and you make turn into art. See, rap is about you take two turntables that people just play their records and suddenly we're making music out of it. Before you just used it to listen to your crap and now look what we're doing. Aerosol can, you used to do it to paint over your chair because you didn't like a white chair, you want a black one. 
we take an aerosol can, look what we're doing with it. We're making it into an art form. And it's basically the same thing with hip-hop is, you know what I'm saying? Moving on. Also, Fresh Moving Arts on. Sessions is going on. Fresh Arts is at arts, 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 arts organization run by youth for all youth interested in the arts. So if you're into music, into graffiti uh -huh. writing, into, into uh -huh. comic drawing, uh -huh. drama, writing poems, oh. rhymes, stories, oh, yeah. or whatever, check out Fresh Arts. There's oh. also workshops in computer yeah. writing and computer using, mm. as well as a brother circle, which deals with things like police, the mm. law, fatherhood, mm -hmm. coming up with black businesses, entrepreneurship, black businesses? you know what I said? Sister oh. circle, they're dealing with being wow. assertive about the law, about police, mm. about sexual assault, date yeah. rape, being a mother at a young age, all those Come types on. of things. So if you want to check it out, call 203-2158. This is the Fresh Arts Sessions. Fresh Definitely in the house. Now you 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 participated in yeah. you that up in the summertime, mm -hmm. right? I work there now. Oh really? Yeah, putting together these sessions so people can you know yeah. come out and learn about things. Oh, and things. Yeah, and things and things. But in terms of samples and like rap music, I think a lot of kids and I don't realize where a lot of music is coming from. A lot, of, a lot of popular American artists get like large respect for the production that they do. But if you knew like the original samples that they use, you realize they didn't do much work at all. Can you give some examples? You want examples? Yeah. Um, Dre Day by Dr. Dre. Um, that originally is um, Leon Hayward. I want to do something freaky to you. Now, if you heard the original, it sounds just like the original without no rap on it. Exactly like it, chorus and all. Mob Town, oh, a lot of jazz, Isaac Hayes, Curtis Manfield, you know? All yeah. stuff like that. All the stuff that my dad used to listen to that we're sampling now, you know? When you listen to Tropical Quest, you're not listening to the way they make records, but you're also listening to the identity of themselves and what kind of records they listen to. Caliber from Born to Rome. I'm Born Swift from Born to Rome. It's the Attic from the Grassroots Music. Fire from the Skeptics. Just one big family still, so you know. Grassroots family. Basically, we just look for music. We'd get like a drum beat from an old soul record, per se, and then like, you know, I find a loop to work over top that complements that particular beat and makes it sound as natural as yeah possible. and then you know try to listen to the rapper to see what he's saying to see if it fits the groove and take it from there add the accessories yeah. that we need and then you know the rest is like would be a bigger studio mix down sort of thing it's more about creating an atmosphere for whoever we're working with right because like say as we were working with quadro we try to work samples and grooves that fit him and work ideas and formats, you know, that are different from what's going on. As if we were working with Dream Warriors, you know? It's like a collaboration of whoever yeah. we're working with. Yeah, like, right. you know, our input and their input put together. Basically, as you can see, we buy a lot of records. Jazz, we got soul, we got hip-hop, we got African, we got Latin, we got jazz over there. It's more jazz and calypso, reggae, everything, you know? We just combine different elements of music. Power, DTS. Well, first thing about DJing is you gotta learn, you gotta know music. That's the main thing. If you're not musically inclined, you know, you can't be a DJ. So, first thing is you, is to learn how to mix and to put, put different types of music together and matching tempos and stuff. So, what we got here playing now is the coming from the JC dub plate, which I produced. And then you bring in, if you wanna bring in something with this. To mix it in, fade it across to the next side, and that's how you do do a um, a phase with the color fade. What we do is just basically you have a beat record playing, and you catch the groove of one record, and you blend it into the next. And then when it, when it catches the right vibe, you just fade it across to the next. Uh, okay, the next thing is scratching, which is everybody knows about it. It ain't as easy as it seems, you know, you gotta like, there's so many different styles, like fader, and moving the fader, and moving the record in different ways to create different, you know, effects. So, you just go across and do it, create an effect. Not necessarily musically trained, but you have to have an ear, you know. Now you notice that the role of the DJ is declined in terms like with hip hop, because like back in the day, you'd have to be like, I'd have to make my name by entering a contest, being in a competition or something like that, going going off, you know? But now it's just, it's just anybody could call themselves a name and they're a DJ, you know?
Does the rhyme come first and the beats? Um, it depends. Sometimes the rhyme well, comes depends, first. Though. Sometimes the beat comes first. Because sometimes... if the rapper sucks, there's not no good beat can do anything for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like straight up. Yeah. yeah, for real. You're done. Beats come first. More more time, or maybe an idea might come, come for a song, first. right? But the beat comes first, and then we write the rhyme. We might just get together on like you know three way the phone whatever, and just think of something, you know, and we'll just each write a verse on that. Well, the MVP has this thing called um, time of the month, and the time of the month is when you know you're really on the flow. You have all these metaphors and all these thoughts, and you could just jot them down on paper like that, you know. So, but other other times you might not have the time of the month and. You really want to put together a good masterpiece, but you know, it takes, so, time. Yeah, it takes time. It all depends. We try to help each other when we can. Yeah, like there's a lot of unity between the groups. Like, uh, Motion and myself are trying to work on a song together now and stuff. All right, I'm Motion. This is Old Quid. This was the basketball school where I went to high school. This is the place where I wrote a lot of my rhymes in class. <laughs> For class, I did them for English class. Like whenever I got a chance, if they gave you an assignment, I write in poetry or your own composition. I put it in a hip hop form, and I always got an A. So few women rappers, or at least so few women rappers, that get props. Do you I, think? Just your opinion. My opinion? I just maybe girls don't take rap as serious as guys. Like you don't really, if you're walking around, you don't really see girls on the street corner rapping, or you know, maybe just some of them don't take it as serious. That's about it. I, I wouldn't really know. In rap, a lot of slang towards women, the bitch and the hoe and stuff like that. And me and Ava were saying that we agree that we don't take it offensively because we're not bitch, we're not hoe and stuff like that. Yeah, but then you can also look at it like this, like, we might not all be bitches and hoes, but sometimes when you have, have um, like, just a, a total bombardment of, like, a certain term that is historically meant to disrespect women as a whole, then people are thinking that, oh, these women in the dance are bitches, right? You know, these women in the dance are hoes. Let me go check that bitch over there. They're not looking to like, to uh, ask, oh, hold on, are you a bitch or a hoe? Can, should I call you that and if you're not? Like, can I, you know what I mean? I'll address you by your name or whatever, you know what I mean? See, like, but then so it's up to you to stand becomes... up and say, you know, that is my, not my name. My mother didn't name me bitch. My mother didn't name me hoe. My name is. Yeah, you know, such as really you're gonna address. No, but I'm saying, but it, it, it's just the same as you know, you're standing up. If, okay, if you're walking down the street and a white person calls you a nigger, you're gonna get offended. You're gonna step to that person and say, you know, either you're gonna knock them out, or you're gonna say, you know, I am not a nigger. You have to listen to more than those two words. You gotta listen to all the lyrics and listen to the point that the people are trying to make. I mean, I guess to some extent, I agree that you know you shouldn't be disrespecting women and calling them bitches and hoes like that. But I mean, just the way I see it, if you're not a bitch or not a hoe, why are you getting? It's no, like expressionism. You, have, you, you know. Have to look at like what that affects you know what i'm saying like i can listen to to certain music and every time i hear you know uh, uh you know i'm a hoochie or whatever fuck me, like you know it's not i'm not gonna run and turn it off stop stop you know what i mean but yeah. after a while like that doesn't it ceases to move me and it annoys me after a while you know what i'm saying like yo i like this man's beats i love like what you know how he rhymes or anything but after a while i'm just getting bored with with that you know that same old right. same right. old you don't seem to go for distant sisters though i don't know about it no no. There's no reason to. At least maybe not yet. Maybe when we go out on tour and we actually meet bitches and yeah. really, really, you know? You know I mean, there's, there's bitches that we know, right? But, I mean... Like, you know, we don't address the whole, you know, female gender. It's just if one particular female just, you know, does us wrong and it's just the pressure's building up and we want to speak about it, then, yeah, it's in the open. Yeah. It's right there. It's open like an autopsy. But other than that, yeah. we don't really, you know... I don't dabble in that. Can't call women bitches, you know, it's not right. Music is a barometer of what's going on in the society. Therefore, if you disrespect the women in the society, it's going to come through in your music. So the sister's going to have to struggle with the brothers about bitch and hoe. Why does Latifah come out with U-N-I-T-Y and all those songs? Why? Because we have to counter that, that you shouldn't paint me as a bitch or a hoe. I should educate you, but you have also got to take the responsibility to educate yourself. It's not a giving up tactic, but if you're going to say I'm a female and I'm going to change the way every male on the mm -hmm. face of this earth thinks, Very I'm going to be tired, I'm going to be dead soon, okay? The whole <laughs> thing boils down to the way you see it yourself. If someone's going, yo, bitch, yo, bitch, don't turn around. You know, there's a lot of West Indians up here, so reggae is a big, very, very big culture, you know what I'm saying? So I've been hearing reggae pumped to my head all the time, so it's just... 
normal for me to like you know put reggae into my music one time cause you know that's the vibes I get from it still. So. Yeah, you want to go on? Well, with they're one and the same if that's what you're asking. I mean, they're both you know ghetto forms of music. I'm saying talk about just life reality. So where do you think you know a great combination of reggae rap is gonna come from? Not from LA, but come from places like Toronto. To the conclusion, a lot of sound boy I get dust out tonight. Hey, 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 what? Hey, 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 the the drag deal, but that is hey. not right. Black male youth was targeted. They have to walk down the street and stuff like that. And no, we should not have to hold our head in shame. We should say we're proud to be who we are. I just don't really appreciate when. They're always blaming rappers for, you know, arm sauce that goes up. Like, for example, the lady that got shot at the um, cafe. In the paper, the guy wrote rappers on the run. But what they don't know is that the guy wasn't even a rapper. He was down with a, a DJ set, like a reggae set. You know what I'm saying? That has nothing to do with hip hop. And then we're getting threats from, like, KKK, the Groove Lot Records, Ray Ray Ray, about how, you know, you good niggers are doing this. And it's the influence of the music and we're gonna die and all kind of, I mean. Yeah, you're like, you know, is, like crazy shit, shit. Yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, crazy shit like that, so. I'm saying, like, all that, all that stuff, just gotta put it down, man. I mean, people making music, if you don't want us to be real, then don't listen to our, like, I mean, don't listen to our music, cause you know, we gotta be who we are. White supremacy is going on. We have the, what's it called, front, heritage front here. And you know, when they're organizing and have their pamphlets out on the street and calling black people um, sambos in the House of Parliament and stuff like that, you don't hear anything. Right? You don't hear anything. But when uh, black youth goes out and uh, does something that they consider is criminal, all of a sudden everybody's suspect. Or Khaled Muhammad comes You know, in. or, yeah. Or so, so he kind of established uh, like a Canadian, a Canadian, uh, more of a Canadian identity in terms of, in terms of what Canada's putting out in yeah. hip-hop, right? No doubt. Yeah, we just basically got to see all the way across Canada, you know, th different ways people live. Right. And we got to see the difference between Toronto and everywhere else. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right, cool. Big up to the rascals in the West Coast, chaos, you know what I'm saying? Right, Much right. music for putting it on Rap City, no right. doubt. Yeah. Now, you guys, uh, you guys, obviously, we're talking about as far as having your own identity, but obviously, America is a major influence as far as hip-hop. You know, how have you guys come to terms with dealing with you know what you put out and still keeping that strong strong identity uh canadian wise and also and also personally personally no doubt like i was saying you know hip-hop is universal so you know it doesn't even matter where you're from it's where you're at you know who knows you see we got mad clicks down there brownsville you know population we go six <laughs> you don't know you fly you and all that so i'm saying anytime we go down there and represent it's not like all oh, them kids is from canada them kids is rhymers and you know right. they got skills you know what I'm saying? I'd also like to big up all the people from our neighborhoods, you know what I'm saying? Rexville, Junksville, the West End peoples, because, you know, that's our culture over there. Hip-hop. Stop. Uh, how, how, do you guys, how do you guys hook up uh, as far as your, your lyrical and uh, musical production? How do we hook up? Uh, how, how, do you, how do you link it up as far as the production? Like, does, did you, like, drop the beats down first and then lay, lay the lyrics? Or? On, on the track, Easy on the Motion, it was the grassroots that produced that. And now we're getting into the production also myself. You know, me and my man Madlock here, Lockdown Entertainment production end of it, you know what I'm saying? Right. And my man, you know, everybody just comes with the ill lyrics and we just put it down in the track and we do it like that. All right, cool. We should, we should mention about the album, uh, as far as where to get it, and uh, if you know, I know it's been distributed by quality. Well, the single, Easy on the Motion, it's done, no. You know what I'm saying? You can get it where you can get it at, man. Everywhere. It's everywhere. Right. Done, no. When's the album coming out? The album's coming the out. Album, the album's coming out. Look out for the album, Tree of Life, you know, but... You don't really have a, a date for that, you know what I'm saying? Just look out for that. In the new year, it'll be in the new year. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be raw. That's gonna be the realest. All right, now guys, introduce. Uh, okay, actually, we got uh, a video pick you want to check out. What video pick you want to check out? Red Love. The Red Love, Method Man. Yeah, man. Black Heart yeah, Pick. You know what I'm saying? Man, Big money. Pick up the Dominic. And hold on. Check it. Check it. Check it. Check it. Check it. No other but T Sweet, yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. 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 Big up Big up G. God, some, some. Yeah, yeah. G. Yeah. Yo, yeah. yeah. Craig, mm. uh, remember that day? Yeah. Mm. Just came from G. Yeah. 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 Uh, Niggas can't so you see, I represent the motherfucking YT. My shit was meant to be, it's just me. Oh, do you know how to work this? Huh? Yeah, yeah. Alright, may I work it right now? But when my sound comes, yeah. Yeah. 
Yo, niggas know I don't come to have fun, I come to make money. It's not funny, fuck this, I'm out to make a nigga look like Yo, I can't see you, good, yo. With the you guns in his up, back, nigga. nigga give up your fuck you know Yo, give me that shit, boom, 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 boom. You have to move your eye back, your eye. No. West, West, West. Make sure you do a straight next time. Nigga. Got my fucking gun strictly on the gun, nigga. Holding up, killing any bitches. Check it. Like that. Stutter. Any pussy not this. Yeah. Bleh! Murder all of one not this, yeah. see? Oh, represent. And the man behind the camera, represent. Young yeah. Dogs. Yeah. Young Tuggies in the blood clot cut, Zin. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Real, like that. Yeah. Is it? The camera. No, my song ain't even up, yo. They're getting better and better. See? Without a kiss. My God, he got better, trust me. He really, really learned how to kiss. See his lips? Give me this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We have to come over here too. Where? Yeah, it has to be the light. The light has to be shining. Alright. This is what we got to say, you know what I'm saying? We have to come over here too. Here you go. Hey, yo, man, this is what we got to say, yo. This is the park, Zin. And no creeps ain't allowed up in this, you know what I'm saying? Because, oh, these are the real gangsters, you know what I'm saying? And, oh, we got thugs like OG up in this. Down to do the motherfucking murder, you know what I'm saying? We're taking niggas out for that shit, man. Niggas fucked us up last time, man. We ain't taking no shit for none of these park motherfuckers, man, you know what I'm saying? Trust me, if niggas want to say shit, they bring it straight to my face. Get dealt with, you know what I'm saying, nigga? Been taking no shit, 97 tugs. See? Ah, yeah, so I met money. See? And all these pussies talking about fucking crips. Yo, trust me, they're gonna feel it, star. Because, oh, I murder them. See? Trust me. I murder them pussies, so all that kind of. This the tugs. See? Representing 97. Money making. See? In the West. I'm gonna take back them chat there. See? Me and my nigga OJ, you know what I'm saying? Making money in a park. You know them way there? Nothing more, nothing less. Yo, yeah, what's up? So what up, man? This is West Side. Represent. See? Keep the hand on the gun, you know them way there? Young Tugs. Representing. 9 to 7, you know what I'm saying? Now them suckers out there, man. Trust me, all them niggas talking about the Bloods and Crips war star. Trust me, I murder them pussy all there. See? Cause they, trust me, all them niggas talking about the Bloods and Crips war star. Trust me, I murder them pussy all there. See? Cause them diss me and them diss. See? And them diss the Bloods. See? So them pussy there for dead. Trust me. And so they start asking questions. They're doing rap is one thing, but then doing it on a business level is another thing. You know, it takes a lot of time, a lot of money. You know what I mean? Being an independent label and all. You know, we just we just put everything we had into putting out these records and you know making sure that the people across the border and worldwide would you know would hear of it. This is a high risk community where young people are especially vulnerable to drug and alcohol abuse. The province did a study that said so. Then it gave the community money to... I want to make films, I want to do that. Like, I want to tell stories to people, to influence people's life. Well, I'm interested in that because, um, first of all, I'm a youth, and I believe that, you know, youth should have a voice. As a matter of fact. In Regent Park, empowerment is supposed to come from making videos about Regent Park. In three. Many young people apply. Only 14 are accepted. They have to live in Regent Park, and they have to show they're really interested. Word, word. All right, yo, in fact, I, before you say that, just add graffiti and like a little... What's your story about? Um, our story is about, mainly it's about uh, urban, urban hip-hop culture in Toronto. What, what about it? And like how society in general discriminates in 
put stereotypes on there. Those stereotypes keep people down, says 20-year-old Nigel Holbrook. And when they're down, they turn to drugs. It's vandalizing, you know what I'm saying? You hate these kids. One solution, he says, is to give them confidence in who they are and where they come from. All right, that's a wrap then. That's good to go. You, you see Regent Park in a very negative light a lot of the time. So we're trying to change that here. A lot of people think that Regent people don't do anything. They think they're not fighters. They think they're, they don't, you know, they don't fight for what they believe. They think that they sit around, you know, collecting welfare checks. But no, that's, that's just what media sees. It really affects the self-esteem when their community is put down or they're put down for living in a, a public housing community and so it's a real esteem builder that they can be able to say hey you know this is not what you think and uh, be able to show that once we show this video saying okay we just people had to work hard i mean they can make things happen once they say it it sort of encourages the young people to also do and follow up what they really believe in like, talk like you're a dj don't talk like a document for an instrument the project costs about fifty thousand dollars a year some of that money pays the participants. It's their summer job. But does it work? Does it prevent drug abuse? Somebody's just grimy. They just straight Toronto slum from Jaden Finch. You know what I'm saying? They don't get involved in no... They just dirty kids. And in their music, if you listen to their music now, it can get to the war because people can relate to that type of struggle they're going through. They don't come from um, families that... Um, they can send them to college and all that. That's not the dream growing up. The dream growing up is just to get one thing, that's money. That's cool, right? I'm just concentrating on one thing right now, man. It's my music still, you know? That's my job right there. This guy sucks. <laughs> Even death becomes glory in the rap scene. The Smugglers album is dedicated to all of their dead friends. They've recently lost five to street violence. Everybody has their time to go, so you gotta look at it like that too. You know, so when it's your time to go, you just go. There's no running away from it. I'm saying I ain't never gonna get shot again. I don't know what's gonna happen. It's life, man. Whatever happens, happens, man. It happens for a reason. God's watching me and all my dead homies are watching me, man. You know, we're here for a reason, you know? No man could kill you. You know, they might, you might think a man could kill you because a man could put a bullet to you or stab you with a knife, hit you in a car, but no man could kill you, you know? So you just gotta watch your back. You gotta watch, you know? You gotta watch how you walk on the streets. Seven currently prohibited. Police believe much of the youth violence in these streets is linked to a favorite rap music theme, gang rivalry. In Jane and Finch, it's the north side against the south side. Stick Up does a lot of rapping about the ongoing street war over drugs and turf, but he denies any gang involvement. He says his 14 bullet holes were just a case of wrong place, wrong time in a bad neighborhood. I've seen few outsiders have witnessed a neighborhood rap concert featuring the smugglers. The event was billed a truce. It was supposed to bring the two warring sides of Jane and Finch, the North and the South, together under one roof for one night. Speng says he believed rap had the power to overcome rivalries. Jane and Finch is known not to get along with each other and stuff like that. Certain parts in Jane and Finch, and we had the whole of Jane and Finch up top, down laying everything up on stage that one night ready to be like this because when I turned around and I seen everybody I was like yeah shoot and I was surprised to see certain man with certain man standing up beside each other so the first thing I said yeah Jane and Finch we're gonna do this man we're gonna do this you know it's gonna happen now while stick up was on stage someone was preparing to use the event to settle the score as a concert came to a close and people started to leave a familiar sound rang out late last night gunmen rushed the crowded warehouse and opened fire two men were shot dead one man died on the dance floor. The other died as his friends tried to rush him to the hospital. He was Junior D, a local rapper and a close friend of the smugglers. 
say, man, a bunch of killers are out there right now, you know what I'm saying? Ain't even about Junity. I see more people, you know? Before Junity drop out, I seen a lot of people drop out. And they ain't find none of their killers, you know what I'm saying? Cops are asking for no reason and everything, you know? I'm like, yo, oh, fuck. You guys never found a shot me the two times, you know? Now you guys are trying to bring me in a double homicide and all this shit, you know? Now show them, yo, man, that's your guys' job. You guys go do your job. Don't ask me for help, man, because I ain't no shit. They say they aren't planning to soften their rap anytime soon. They don't see themselves as a problem. And they say, okay, that's it, you guys are promoting violence, you're promoting crime. And we're promoting violence. Yo, know, that's what we see every day, man. We see every day. Even no, no, if you know, even if you're another kid watching TV, man, you're gonna see violence on TV. 25 rounds of gunfire sprayed the community's back alley. A teenager was shot in the chest. Police say an unknown man fired several shots from a handgun. Over the past year, police reported 80 gun-related offenses in the Jane and Finch area. But community leader Lennox Farrell says there's more to a neighborhood than what you hear in the news report. He's gonna tell you who he is. Tell him who you are. I'm a basketball player. <laughs> Which team do you play for? Huh? What team do you play for? Raptors. Raptors. In spite of the growing concern about rap and violence, the smugglers and their bad guy image have never been more popular. What does that mean? That's the way I look at it. I don't think I'm going to be lucky the next time. I was lucky before still. Yeah, that's what the music's there for. Because I don't know why he was killed. People just like don't want to talk about it because when they think about it more, come on, people are scared. The, nah, nah, nah. Let's face it, people are scared to talk Everybody's about it. People scared. are trying to protect other people. So let's be real. Another man just want to bury it and let it go. Um, actually, these kids here they want to pay for a basketball. I don't think they want to. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. So you, you're going up to play ball? Yeah. Kidnap is very quiet. He's very, very quiet. Weekends and evenings are free. Then the day is only 50 minutes you have for the month. I know, and someone called me. I was telling them to call me back later. I'll call them back later. Well, if every, if every time somebody going to call you, and it is going to take up the 50 minutes the whole month. 50 minutes is less than one hour for one month, which is 30 days. The police are not going to do anything. For how much games are we in, JP? Seven games? Seven games right here. You we know? fried these guys seven this times. Guy right here, seven it's times. the truth right here. All right, let's go. Let's Gaddafi, go. The truth. In addition to the pessimism about his brother's case, Gaddafi dislikes his mother's ongoing activism. Yeah, I think my mom's changed, but you no, know, she thinks I changed too. You know I mean, that's how life is, though. You know, life's, life's full of changes. Yeah, my mom's vomiting and all this media stuff does affect me because I, sh I, I really believe that she should just, you know, stick to her own stuff and anything because honestly, like, that's not really helping. I, I feel, this is what I feel, it's not helping. It's not helping me. Maybe it's helping her, but it's not helping me. Gaddafi leaves the neighborhood every day to play basketball in a quiet suburban community center. He is waiting to hear if he will receive a college scholarship. In spite of this, he fits the profile of what the police call an at-risk youth. That is, he's black, male, from a single-parent family, and living in public housing. Basketball keeps me going, keeps me, you know, keeps my mind straight. I gotta be active and take everything day at a time, you know, and I just make sure everything's normal to me, because if I have anything changes, that's gonna make my, that's gonna be a downfall for me. And I don't wanna do, I don't wanna have a downfall, because if I have a downfall, then I might do something wrong. And right now I'm doing all right. And you always say, Mom, that's true still, you know. <laughs> true still, I love my mom still, you know. He always said, everything he said is still. This young man here, he was talking just like Chegon would say, everything. 
you know, it's right still, you know, it's true still. 18-year-old Negus Tafari is here with his mother, who is one of the organizers. They live in a Toronto public housing project where gangs are active. Guys, I don't know what to say. Some of them are born killers. You know, it's like that anger inside of them say, I want to do it and I don't care. You know what I mean? And other youths will pressure them to go and fight other youths. If they're pointing a gun at me, Right there, I, I, that, that calls for straight uh, retaliation. Okay. I think you guys know what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Plus you, you, only, you I'm young. So is you, there, is there anything else you could do yeah. to prevent avoid, them killing you or to protect yourself without you having to take their life first? Yeah. What do you think you could do to prevent them from actually doing what they're threatening to do or to protect yourself? I don't know, just take the slug. Just take the slug. Take it. Take the slug. You're limiting your answers to solutions that you have to come up with on your own, as if you live in isolation, as if you live by yourself and there's nobody else in the world around you? No, everybody's, everybody's scared too. Everybody's scared too. Uh, they actually be scared of, they're scared for their life, so actually they be scared for my life. There is another side to Nikas that he didn't reveal at the retreat. On the streets, he's known as Ghetto Prophet. The name is GP. I'm the best in this game, and I don't give a what. I might spit in your face, and I am not you. And this is not your life, so get off my dick. This is not your fight. Listen to me. I'm young, but I'll have you dead. Get the word, I'll turn your brain into scramble eh? See. <laughs> like Julia's family, Nigas Tafari lives in public housing in a high crime area. And like 40% of black youth in Toronto, Nigas is not in school and is unemployed. In his world, the most important thing is respect. And the way to get respect is through toughness. A man could just kill a man because he feels like it. A man could just kill a man because he looked at him in the wrong way. A man could just kill a man. Because yo, he has he's chilling with one of his red, one of our guys that he has beef with. It's one of his enemies, you know. I don't think about hope. I never did think about hope. Yeah. I believe this is how. Something not right here. It's Something all, not right. It's all of a sudden, it is just popping up like mm. all over the place. When neighbors yeah. meet around yeah. Julia's we'll kitchen table, it. the subject often turns to the community's troubles. Yeah. And then you, you, the problem is, though, you see, some parents can't handle, can't handle it. They don't know how to do it. They don't do it with love. They do it with hate. Yeah, we're not talking about And when you do it with hate, you abuse them. The Bible tells you, yeah, train up the child so how you so want so him so to so grow. grow. The Bible tells you that. I these do. kids, when they see the stuff on TV, they don't see the in-between. All they see these guys their age, fancy cars, lots of women, lots of money. In 2001, the Toronto police laid over 4,000 firearm possession charges, a five-fold increase in five years. In response, the police have set up a citywide guns and gangs task force. The escalation of firearms in Toronto, the escalation of gangs, and the escalation of the drug trade are, are a very toxic mix. And what's happened is the, uh, these scores are being settled with guns. Shagun Farkasson lived in an area with the highest rate of violent crime in Toronto and may have had contact with gang members. What you have to understand is that the gang is a criminal organization. Criminal organization, there's a purpose. The purpose is to commit crime, make money, that's their livelihood. It's like, if I can buy a product from here, I can buy it cheaper over here, or I can obtain a service, I'm gonna obtain the service over there. Yo, we represent, we represent, yo. Let me show you something, dude. 
Yo, see us? The LGC clip. All the men that ain't even here right now, you know what I'm saying? The niggas like us, yo, we represent the turf. You seeing? What's your turf? Can't even really tell you too much, you know what I'm saying? Just give you a little something, something. You know? We handle beef and shit. You go to school? Got kicked out of school. Why? Because, man. Stab the kid in his throat. Stab the kid in his throat? That's what we do, yo. That's LGC. LGC. Let's show the sign. Sin. Sin. Represent. Represent. Yo, cuz. Yo, yo, yo. This thing wants to know about LGC. So I still don't want the niggas is repping. A gang offers nothing more than what the normal social structure of family and society offers. Bonding, friendship, purpose, protection. The kids that are being targeted are the kids that don't have that. So they're ripe for the picking. What do you guys do? G bang on the block. Gang bang, yo. Represent. LGC niggas, yo, we don't, yo, we don't take shit from nobody, you know what I'm saying? All the niggas is down on the real tip. Isn't that true? Yeah, that's true, yo. Did your mom know? Mom don't really give a fuck. Is that what you guys do? No, no, no. We play ball and stuff. But well, why? Do you go to school? Yeah, yeah. I go to school, man. But so why is it important to be cool like that? Like... Yo, it's all about respect. Respect. And if you ain't hard, you're not getting no respect. Right? Don't worry. Sorry. Whatever happens, happens. You know what I'm saying? Shit. We all go when we gotta go, right? There's no set date when we're gonna die. So yo, why not represent until? See it? So don't you have any hope for yourself? No, we don't cares about hope. Who gives a fuck about all that shit, man? You know what I'm saying? We're just living. We're just living. We all know we're gonna have to eventually die. Hey, no hope. Every day I walk my street. The theology is la vida loca. It's like it's now. It's it's power. It's money. It's drugs. It's women. It's the thrill. It's it's cultural. It's that's the problem that we have in the streets of Toronto right now. Police apprehend two youths when a woman is struck by a beer bottle. A 20-year-old male is arrested. Right now in the hood, it's bad. The cats is gonna keep getting plugged. So it's just, it's a never ending cycle. The kids are coming up, they start doing it. How many funerals have I been to, you know what I mean? And it's like, my green eyes just got it. Who knows who I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm just, you know what I mean? My saw could ring any second and they could be like, yo, this person got it, you know what I mean? Are there gangs in that area? A lot of gangs. Crip, bloods, everywhere. How you feel about that? That's how life is. Are you part of a gang? I can't answer that question. <laughs> Three hours later, 200 meters away, 19-year-old Amar Young of Rexdale is shot to death in front of horrified revelers. We have gun and or gang enforcement on the street seven days a week, 24 hours a day. But can I just look at somebody and say, that person fits the profile of somebody that has a gun? No. Doesn't look like I have any guns. You know? It's how easy it is. Now all of a sudden I've got a lot more power than you. Now you're respecting me because I've got a gun. It's just one gun. Not a big deal. Now we got a bigger gun. Now I got more respect. Now I got two guns, one's big. This gun came from the United States. Somebody's tried to take the serial number off it. Brand new, you can buy this for next to nothing in the US. They're everywhere. Now I really don't like what's happening. Now I've got a machine gun. Now I'm now I'm gonna have tons of respect. Now everybody's gonna respect me. Now everybody's gonna respect me. 
We know the economic situation, no jobs, no training. Young people need counseling, we know all of that. The black community do not have the resources to deal with some of these problems, but we must get the resources. And it has to begin within our community. You talk to the typical young person in our community, he's angry all the time. He's angry and impatient all the time. Why? Not because he's just angry because he's black for no reason. Everything about his reality makes him angry. And we need to understand why that happens. So we can understand why they would so easily take another black life. Because living has a meaninglessness to it for them. And a, a kind of depravity that says, I am so removed from what the society says is the Canadian dream that I have to do whatever I can to get what I can now in the ways that I can. And the future really, I'll deal with it if I get there. Because in my reality, I'll probably be shot and killed. Late summer, Julia's son, Gaddafi, is still waiting to hear about college. He's drawn to a You Move three-on-three -three basketball tournament, co-sponsored by the police who have uneasy relations with the residents of this housing project. Although the mother's support group sees this as an opportunity to raise awareness, the police don't give them an opportunity to speak. They seem to want this to be a feel-good event, and the subject of violence is never raised. We have with us here today on Centre Court, Jamal McGlaw, with the Charlotte or the New Orleans Hornets. Even their star guest who grew up in Toronto does not Thanks. mention that his stepbrother was gunned down nearby the year before. Everybody's out here together and then having a good time. And I think uh, just work hard for you young ones, set goals, uh, be hungry, and uh, the sky's the limit. It wasn't too long ago that, you know, I was here playing at, at the community center across the way there. I think that events like these in, in the d different neighborhoods um, have, I think that they have a lot more meaning to the organizers than the actual participants. Not that it's, you know, a waste of time or anything, but it still won't give like a clear imprint of, you know, how is it that an individual, you know, a basketball player here is going to be able to get involved. It's not gonna build anything because there's gonna just there's, there's still gonna be violence around the world, you know. You can't help, you can't stop violence. You can't stop violence. It's just gonna, you know, it's just because you know this is a one-day thing. Violence is every day, you know. If this was every day, then then it could help, but it's not every day. So after this is done, there could be violence. You can't help that. Overall, as a, on a whole, I think that you know, the police is the biggest factor um, as far as addressing this because if there actually was trust between young people and the police, then you would see a lot more cooperation at this point. And I just don't think that that's something that exists even to this day. I don't think we're doing enough as a society to respond to this. I mean, on the one hand, we say, Members of the community aren't cooperating in terms of giving us names and so on. That doesn't happen in a vacuum. It happens in an environment of distrust and fear of the police that a lot of people have because of past experiences and the relationships that we have had. It's not because people don't want to catch criminals. Of course we all want to catch criminals and we want to see justice done. Okay, I'm here, fucking Mungbee Multimedia, live, Ghetto Concepts, right before the first... Live and direct. Uh, right in Victoria, BC. You know. Third leg of the half, uh, the off the hook tour. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where you guys, sure, sure. Where you guys been so far? The Cam, Cam Loops, Cam Loops the Cam Loops, and Cam. Van Van Vancouver. Well, so do you think that's just because people in Canada are hungrier for it? Because there's less less groups and less people doing their thing, or like? No, I mean hip hop is a way of life. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I think that um, I mean. Every, it's, it's gone worldwide now. As far as if you go to Japan, you're gonna you, you're seeing artists Switzerland and Canada. You know, what I mean, everywhere par participating. So once when rap rap came in, people thought it was a fad. Yeah, it's not a fad. I mean, this is this is a way of life for people, mm -hmm. and it's gonna be here forever. You know, hip hop is not going nowhere. Mm -hmm. So you just did a track with uh, Baby Blue Sound Crew. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, we did that. And we had too much. Yeah, and that's a banger. Dope. That's a yeah. fucking Crazy. banger. Yeah. 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 And the group is on a whole, we've elevated, and you know, we mm -hmm. like all forms of hip hop. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? We don't just stick to one style, whatever yeah. the beat. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what you're gonna come on. You guys, uh, because you guys are pushing a couple other. Guys, eh? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So you want to talk about those guys real quick? Yeah, I name mean, up we got Angel Dust. I mean, the hottest female coming out of Canada. Period. Yeah. I'm saying we got um, Ray Smooth, who's um gonna take it up a a notch on the lyrical end. You know, what I'm saying for all you lyrical cats out there. Mm -hmm. Um, and I mean, all of us formed together as a group of, um called the Seven Bills All Stars. So you got to look out for that project right there. That that's gonna be crazy. You know right. what I mean? Taking it back. So. And I mean, like, we just got to big up everybody across Canada that's representing for hip-hop, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. we out there, we're, and and we, nothing's going to stop us, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? We're in this for, for the long haul. A lot to come. All right, so uh, here we are in your uh, in your crib. Yeah. Uh, this would be your kitchen. Yeah, definitely. Just getting everything fixed up, you know. Very smart. Yeah. yeah. And uh, this would be the... Um, the uh, this is the meeting room. This is the meeting room. Yeah. Distinguished from the other rooms by the garland of flowers. We speaking in here, you know. I, I like what you've done with the place. Yeah. It's very Bauhaus. This is the master here. bedroom here. This is the master bedroom. Yeah. Okay. Um, Why where's the bed? <laughs> oh, the Bible. Was that placed by the Gideons? Well, we can show you upstairs. Yeah, let's do the upstairs first. There we go. So what do we have in here? This okay. here. This here. This is just called the room. This is the room, as opposed to the master bedroom or the meeting room. Yeah. Just the room. Yes. Why do you have all those coat hangers and yet you don't have an actual rod to put the coat hangers on? Because it ain't about that. <laughs> all right, so this is your bathroom. Yeah. I noticed the, uh, the uh, toilet bowl. You guys heard of a thousand flushes? You see that guy on TV, Toilet yeah, Duck? Yeah, yeah. You know, one of those you things. You need one of them joints? You may want to invest in one of those things. I'm just guessing by the yellow stripes. All right, welcome back to the Wham Bam. Ed the Sock here hanging out with uh, Point Blank in uh, Regent Park. And, oh, they're having a little dispute over there, apparently. Uh, this uh, area that looks familiar, this is where the guys did their uh, first video, shot right here. Legitimate, in the hood. They didn't go someplace and, like, dirty it up and try to make it look like the hood. They actually shot it here in the hood. What the hell's that, a police car? They hit me with a searchlight, I'm the hell out of here. So these are your neighbors over here? Yeah, man. This is, that's this, your neighbors? That's their gate? It's multicultural, you know Multicultural? Yeah, man, that's how the hood is, yo. All right. You know what I'm saying? It ain't black and it ain't white. It ain't, you know what I'm saying? It's everything. You know everything know mixed saying? in. All everything, the cultures. Everything. Everything. Right. From Asian to black to white, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's here, man. You know? Don't get it twisted, man. It's poverty. That's what the struggle is, yeah. How long you lived in this neighborhood? Man. Oh, my bad. Um, We've been here for a minute, yeah. man. You've no. been here for a minute? For a minute, for a long minute, you know what I'm saying? No, I don't really. So now we're going to go to the barbecue spot. This is the spot where we're like, you know, That's we That's a well-placed uh, dumpster, too. It Yo. doesn't get in the way of the egress, you know, or ingress to the building. Nothing. No, okay. It's all good. <laughs> all this right. is the community center here. Let me, let this me. This is the community sorry, center? Sorry, sorry about that. The dumpster? So this is the barbecue area? Barbecue yeah, area we get our eat on. on. It's right. gonna start soon. You get your eat on? You got anything on the uh, the grill? Nah, no, not right now, no. but it's getting seasoned right now. What do you mean it's getting seasoned? Cool. Can I just ask you, do you think that's up to code? I don't want to so right We're gonna walk behind the building and then take him around the building. All right, wait, wait up, no, wait up. No, don't leave me behind. No, come on, You'll man. You'll find my corpse Yo, in I'm the gonna show you. I'm gonna show you no, what we did all our video shoot stuff, you know what I'm saying? Can one of you talk at a time? I can't keep track. So this person here has some trust issues. Who's that? I'm guessing here by the windows. Oh, this. There's some trust oh, issues. This is this is where this is where the the old age people, you know, all the people that we we grew up, they helped us grow up and help us be, you know, the people that we are today. They come out here and you know they play bingo. Why you know are they? What I'm saying? Why do they have like? Fences on the windows, though. What do you mean, fences on the window? The person's inside, he hollers out the numbers, and they <laughs> play bingo. <laughs> this is where they play <laughs> bingo, man. This is bingo in the hood. Bingo the guy in the sits hood. inside a protected area it's to call out real. the numbers. It's all real. I like the sod. <laughs> <laughs> They're uh, helping to put down a new lawn? Nah, man. It's just there. <laughs> You're very zen about these things. You see that here? Yeah. This is the Nelson Mandela School. All right. So, like, he came down here, got us clean the citizenship, and then got his school named after him. Also. Nelson Mandela. Where this is go? where a lot of like famous people come out of. Who, who are some of the famous people that came out of? Man, uh, I can name a few Nelson people. Nelson Mandela School. Oh, Wiggy. Oh, yeah, Wiggy. So Ed, where are you man. taking me? Ed, Ed man. Ed, man. I your sister. When you were in jail, you <laughs> my sister. Oh no, you must be confusing her with your mom. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, my mom passed away, buddy, but it might have been your mom I was thinking about. Oh, okay. How long were you in jail for? Uh, that don't matter, man. When I, was, when I was in there, I your mom, buddy. Did you? Yeah. And what about your cellmate? How many times were you mom? <laughs> Yo, know, this is one of the locations that we filmed yeah. the video at. You know, that Thin well, Light Life 2002 yeah. video. And yeah. like I said, like I said, multicultural. Look around. Multicultural. Right. You know what I'm it's saying? Right. It yeah. ain't about it's black right. and white or anything else. Eh? It's about poverty and rich, yo. You feel me? We trying to do this. Of okay, here's the rootin' burger. This is this is where all the kids, like you know, they get their eat on. It's lunchtime, you know, you see Nelson Mandela. They're right here. This right. is where they get their eat on in here. Right. Are you Mr. Rootin' Burger? No, that's Pa there. Oh, okay. This place is open seven o'clock in the morning. You know right. what I'm saying? So if you're up early, you can come here and get your eat on. You know what I'm saying? Like, how many how many sugars in the mint tea? How many sugars in the mint tea? Sudi, you got three right. sugars. Sudi. All right. Yeah. Let's All right. roll out. Let's roll out. Let's roll out. All right. Okay. Yeah. Hey, guys, what, are you abandoning me here? Nah, man. We're right here. Where are you? We're right here. We're, right here. We're, just, we're just ready to tour out of here. You know what I'm saying? With the kids. All right. You know what I'm saying? It's all love around here, man. You know, the kids just got out of school, you know? Let's, let's just move out of here, though, because, right, you know, so this ain't the spot here. to stay. All right, so you know what? We're going to go and walk on the boardwalk, right? Yeah. Okay. Stick around for more with me and my boys in the hood, point blank. When Ed the Sock returns after this. Represent! Welcome back to Ed the Sock in the Hood with Point Blank. So now uh, we're continuing our walk with yeah, uh, Point this, Blank and Regent Park. This, this is the north side. This is where is that it like all the, started. Uh, is that like the east side, west side thing going on in no. the states? North side, this south side? This is the north side what they haven't even heard of yet. You know what I'm saying? It's always east, this west, south. Right. This is north. North. And how does the north side distinguish itself from the south side? Dundas Street. Dundas well, what Street. What makes it different? What makes a difference is, is this is where it started. This was built first. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So this is the old school. Oh, this yeah. is the first project right. built in North America. The first This project. here. This here, first North. First project. Number north. one, everything else was a duplication. Duplication. Really, this was before the U.S. projects? Yeah. 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 Well, you know what? It's the community, man. We all stick together to make this place maintain. You know what I mean? Right. You know what? It's the community, man. We all stick together to make this place maintain. You know what I mean? Right. So, as long as the community sticks together, this place will always look as the first project built in North America. You know what I'm saying? Yo, yo! North Side Riders. Yo, yo! Those are North not Side Riders. Now, are they? Uh, PB. Holla! Holla! Turn, turn around. Okay. Tell them. You see that? Oh, it's all love. It's all, all love. It's all love, but that's just all the rest. <laughs> yeah. Where is the love in the rest? Come on now. You see that Brinks truck down there? Yeah, they the, knew you were coming, man. The Brinks Look, truck. You see it leaving? What are you like from Move Krypton? On, How the hell did you spot that you Brinks see truck? That? This is the, the, the North Community Center. Here. North Community Center. I noticed this place doesn't have a dumpster in front of it. No. And there's a swimming pool there. Well, I see that you guys don't have a problem with chlorine burning your eyes. <laughs> hell no. Um, Oh, there's the ice cream truck. Yeah. Okay, why has somebody, has somebody uh, locked their shopping cart? <laughs> yeah, man, you might it's a it rubber right gun. Yo, hide It's a rubber truck. gun. Put it up in your I shirt What are they going to do, frisk me for G.I. Joe's bazooka? Yeah, this is the ice cream kit. This is all done from the community, you know what I'm saying? Everything here is done by the community. They come out and take pride in their area, beautify it. For sure. Take the, uh, the walrus and the you hammerhead shark and uh, the spray paint that says north. It says north, man. It's all good. This is where we all get our thug on. You get your thug on? Yeah, the so, north so far, side rider right get their thug your, on. Getting your eat on? Your thug and on. And getting your thug on? What is, getting your, on? what is getting your thug on? Well, you're getting your thug on is doing your thing on the low. Well, nobody will know. You know what I'm saying? And what is getting your thing on the low where nobody will know? I can't tell you that because then you will know. You know what I'm saying? Very zen. Hey, uh, you just pick up that drink there? Yeah, Yeah. well, you don't know what we did to it while you were gone, man. Yeah, You're braver than I thought. My drink, man. What do you mean, man? I got mad love up there. Man. Yeah, you got mad love, all right. People tell me if they did something to my stuff, you know what I'm saying? Well, we'll send you the tape. Yeah, send you yeah. the tape, bro. <laughs> all right. No, because we got we got the feds watching us right Look, now. Look, right there. Oh. Why are they watching us? Hey. Why won't they leave us alone, them cops? 5 -0. don't worry, they're with me, all's cool. Yeah, they're cool. We're, We're cool. Alright, good listen, it's good to know that they're here, making sure everybody's safe and everybody's secure. Everybody's safe. 
All right, I see that um, security is obviously number one here. Yeah, man, you know, they're watching us all the time, you know, 24 hours a day, every block I go to, you know, nowhere, no matter where I walk, they're there, they're watching us. That's why I'm not too shy about this camera right here. Well, you see, this is the thing, man, you got to get used to it, you're point blank. Exactly. You guys are tearing it up on the charts, you're going to have cameras in your face everywhere you go. Exactly. So growing up here with all these closed circuit cameras mm -hmm. was really just trying to get you comfortable with the idea of the paparazzi. Yeah. This is one of the places. You know? Right. So we uh, bounce here and we gonna there. We're bounce inside here and uh, here's some, here you guys sure, doing yeah. some rapping or whatever it is you guys do. Let's do that. Now you see our little working environment see sometimes, you? you know what I'm saying? All right, let's go take a look in there. Let's check it out. All right, this is Wellesley Sound Studio, you know. This is where PB makes a lot of magic happen right here, you know. All right, working you all right? environment. Are waking you? Yeah. This is Jeff. Hey, Jeff. This is June. June. Why does your name start with the J sound too? No, my name's Dan. Dan, you yeah, threw off the curve, Dan. Yeah, Dan's new to Wellesley Studio. We've been here for years, so you All know. Right. Pro Tool Studio, everything you want. It's All real right. lovely. A lot of knobs. Yeah, a lot I of knobs. I like working at much music. <laughs> All right, this is where you guys step up to the mic and do your little stuff. Yeah, man. Give me a little rap, awesome. will you? I can't. What well, you want? Acapella? Yeah, something? acapella. Give me something. Man. Give me ten freaking seconds. Man, listen, we coming for you, one of the few holding the north border. You under pressure like crunch time in the fourth quarter of a crown witness reappearing on a court order. We got this game sold with her names embroidered. See, Still there me? you go. Was that so freaking right. hard? You know what the best oh. thing about these soundproof booths is? What's the best thing about the soundproof booths? You booth? close, you shut the doors. Yeah. Nobody knows you know what I'm that. saying? So what, you can like fart in here and there nobody knows no, outside? Ain't no air. No Yo, no. give me a light. Give me a light. fart in here, I imagine it would just be a while. You, so you want to hot right. box it in the booth? Hot box it? It's that doesn't the loveliest. sound so good. Isn't that when you like fart oh, under the bed covers? It's the loveliest. Alrighty. It's the loveliest. There we go. Okay, very good. Uh, okay, there you go. Hey, guys, we got to say goodbye now. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What do you mean, hold on? We got to say goodbye. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Okay. I don't want the rest of the crew in the picture. Yeah, well, the rest of the crew, hurry up. I think they're busy. All right. Um... Thanks very much, guys. Look at you, you're yeah, sweating. Yeah, man. I know I ain't sweating. Yeah, yeah look at you guys. You're, it's you're... hot, then it's cold, then it's hot, then it's cold, man. You what, are you going through saying? menopause? What the hell's the matter with you? No, man. Anyway, it's, it's the block. I want to thank you guys. Give you props for taking me through your uh, your hood, your uh, community. Let me take a look at uh, where you live and the kind of music you're talking about. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. What are you reaching for? Don't worry, it's I know still I there. I got something, man. Yeah, yeah, oh, well, you got yeah. something for you me? Got it? I got it. All you got that there? Yeah. Oh, there, oh. Man. Look at that. that. This is for you, man. man. Thank you, you very saying? much. You gotta take that stale one out of your mouth, cause that's real good. Yeah, right, yeah. You can might be able to fill that up with something real nice, no? Right here, like... we call it a capone. All right. We just enjoyed point blank. Okay. All right, Imperial. They got the message. You got a CD. All right. Yeah, look, tons of tracks. Look at that. All right. All right. Hey, okay. We, boy, we're always the businessman, aren't you? <laughs> you know. All right. So what are you guys up to? I, ever since I hung with you guys in Regent Park, a lot of people saw that. And yeah. uh, what have you been busy with? Just uh, finishing off this album we got coming out for the summer and uh, the top shot of CD like Piro was just showing you. All right. Where can people get that, by the way? You can get it at Platinum World Heavens, all the local urban hip hop stores down there. All the mom and pops hip hop stores all across Toronto, Ontario, you know? All right, so then, you know, you guys sing about the realities of the street because you live in the hood, unlike some people who come from the suburbs and then whine the rest of their time that, oh, I had a bad trip, my mommy didn't love me. These guys, they know what they're singing about, right? For real, shout out to the hood, Blake Street, you know, all the hoods everywhere, oh, you know? Sure. Yeah. These guys could take me out, so I gotta be nice. But we're all pals, right? Hell yeah, you know yeah, how that goes. Right. There are negative in Regent Park, and there are positive. And the thing is, when there are real positive vibes that are going on in the region, the media don't really focus on the, the positive. They're more like focus on the negative. But that's something that I guess the media need to work on, right? And it seems like it's been going on for years, so maybe they won't change. Maybe they'll just stick to the way they're going about Regent Park. Yo, yo, I keep the ratchet, my gear got me darker than Wesley Cause niggas act like high school teachers and always want to test me Get to...
You should get down with the program for one click clack of how you smelling like toe jam in Toronto. Most niggas really don't last long for not buying a gun but possessing a glass jar. We smoke, I'm talking on becoming in glass jars. I'm hard body homie like the frame on a fast car. And I ain't got time to slow down cause niggas get hit when they thinking that this shit won't go down. Y'all faggot niggas wanna step to the league till I bring my whole squad and you on the floor watch it bleed. I'm on some real shit, Jane and Finch back to the east My niggas be labeled as Toronto Beast Running from the beast, keep that metal piece Hit you in your face, homie, you'll be labeled the same Peace show, formerly AKA Chinky Nova Scotia, to Scarborough, to the block Back to me here, Cadillac, you know We here, this is the hood, really If you get a good fucking look at shit You don't have to take a spin around, we here Niggas, 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 couple whiteies, couple niggas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We ain't. Uh, I know this, 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 this how we. Uh, this how I look anyway. This how I look. Yeah. You know, tagged up and shit like that. Fucking, if you catch it, if you catch a good look across the across the lane there, you got cat side and uh, you got Leighton side. What this is, is Fair Valley, you know what I'm saying? Fair Valley Court, you know what I'm saying? Cataracty Park, don't forget the sign right there. We eating it up, man. Yeah, you, right you ready? It's the building, man. You ready, cuz? You fucking with me, yo. Cataracty like Park, it. come see us, nigga. Fair Valley, you don't know what's in that building, nigga. There's a lot of shit in that building. Y'all stay away from the building. The building's ready? worse than the block. Don't fuck uh, around, man. Ready? You got 20? 20. Yeah. yeah. Think we on the block. We got a lot. All right. All right. This store. History, man. You got robbed fucking so many times. They just won't open it again. This make no sense. It's been years. You know? Look at it. Fuck, make no sense. Which one? Which one? This store right here. It's oh, this is, this is one yeah. store right here. It hasn't been open for at least 10 fucking years now. This shit will never open, be right away, yo. you know? By the time this motherfucker got open, oh, boy. Yeah, he grew up. He grew up. Oh, boy. Holy shit. Niggas went bankrupt in that no motherfucker, store in the yo. No fucking hood, man. No, I'm still eating off of that shit. Man, this hood. No store in this fucking hood, man. I used to jack this shit on my little BMX, yo. Jump on my BMX and splurt. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> shit was crazy. You know this bitch. Shit is real. Big shit know this in this. Iceberg, yo. She might see ice small with nappy fucking hair. Still got niggas living in fear. Don't come outside cause they scared. I'm done and waiting while y'all still getting prepared. Ain't jacking niggas for their gear. We did that shit in the younger years. Done enough moves to wear clothes made out of deer, but bun that. I ain't trying to look like those queers. I got ice senses. I hear guns raising the air. Sneak upon you from a rear, blow a hole through internal air. I'm a savage. I attack with no reason to care. I serve more balls than tennis. Drug dealing menace. Been that way before Dennis and the crack that I got was made by house. Fiends come back shaking, foaming from the mouth. Locked down ward and south. Soldiers chopping on every route. Doubled up whenever there's a drought. So more cookie than the fucking Girl Scouts. Y'all better recognize money what it's about. So I have mine to be left for the cops chalked out. Another dude gets popped every time the Glock's out. That's how you get it for now. Holla at me, This is it's your boy J Stacks, aka Fat Boy, Kid Emperor the City. A.K. Slap, your favorite MC in the mouth. A.K. What are the five fingers say to the face? A.K. Stack Chappelle. A.K. LeBron Jane. A.K. Jim Junkin. A.K. Joking 40. A.K. Mr. Dress Up. Fam One. We're on the Jane block right now. You know what I'm saying? Murder. I'm saying the young guards. You know what I'm saying? We out here. You know what I mean? That's how we do it. It's a hustle. It's a hustle, man. It's a hustle, you know what I'm saying? If you, your hustle's right, you get to the top. If your hustle's not right, you don't get to the top. You understand what I'm saying? You have a fire, you one shit. We just on that, you know what I'm saying, that really gangster shit out here. If you ain't a drug dealer, you're a baller. If you ain't a baller, you're a rapper. That's how it is down here. That's, that's the way it is, that's though. That's see it. That's the way they see it, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you, you know what I'm saying? Quiet niggas, you know what I'm saying? Don't make money out here.
what I'm saying? You gotta hustle. Keep on your grizzly. You know what I'm saying? Because somebody will get you the first slip. Your first slip. It's a done deal out here. Don't let me catch none of you guys slipping out there. Don't, you know what I'm saying? Don't slip. Don't let me catch you slipping because I will. I'll repeat myself. I will eat your food. Shoot your motherfucking ass too. Yeah. Uh, these are the young niggas, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's a different generation now, you know what I'm saying? It's young and old. You know what I'm saying? The young boys is the one doing the speaking nowadays. You know what I'm saying? And the older niggas that raised them could be on the receiving end of this shit too. You know what I'm saying? This is the life. You know what I'm saying? I thank God I'm here. Everything I rap is real life, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? These young niggas. These guys grew up seeing the older niggas. So now these niggas is blooded out, red flags and shit. What up, ma? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, red. You know what I'm saying? They all represent that. This is what they grew up and seen. You know what I'm saying? Seeing the older niggas doing. You know what I'm saying? And they got this. What up? What up? You guys just caught yourself in a situation. You know what I'm saying? That's my nigga Danger De Niro over there. Don't get him on camera. Don't put him on the camera. Yo! yo. Dealing with a bucket, still low. I yeah, know, I see him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? This is a See? That's seen these niggas? Drug dealing niggas. Yeah, it's it's real yeah. out Got everything. Got floods, Crips, Latin Kings, got the Jamaican crews. Got everything, you know what I'm saying? Got, a, got mad crews out here, niggas. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I got, I got Crip niggas. Out here, it just happened to be, it just happens to be a bunch of blood niggas, you know what I'm saying? A lot of red out here, you know what I'm saying? A lot of money making blood niggas out here, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just the way it goes, Crip niggas, false ass niggas, Cripping. A lot of Driftwood niggas is Cripping. These niggas just happen to be blood out here. So it's just the way it goes, you understand what I'm saying? It's just, it's just the life we live. Yeah, look, 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 look. Look, 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 that's, that's life out here. She's going to work. With the infamous bridge, chalk farm, you know what I'm saying? Niggas get, niggas get got on this bridge. You know what I'm saying? Eat. Hey, niggas hustle on this bridge. Niggas make their moves on this bridge right here. You know what I'm saying? I guarantee you, you niggas cannot be found after 12 on these bridges. See? These four buildings right here. It symbolize power, you understand what I'm saying? If you can stand in between these bridges, in between these buildings right here, you're a powerful son of a bitch. Represent up, this is kid track T, T R A C K T dot representative Teasdale, you know, we in the hood, four buildings, what's up? This just goes down every day, man. Double up, click, red line. Yeah, man. Shit happens. Every day, but you know what happened to the guy that got him, though, right? He's still up in yeah. 40 T's, though. All brown bricks, none of that rich shit. All uh -huh. brown bricks, yeah, nigga. <laughs> yeah, over, over 10,000 residents, man. That's how we moving around here. Over 10,000 residents, it's yeah. heavy in the streets, man. Got got Crescent Town over there on lock, P3 over there on lock. Teaser that runs the whole place, man. We on pharmacy strip, you know what's really good. Let's get in the building. You got a couple of them man them right there walking through. Get a quick shot of them. You know what I mean? Why the data? It's done, Teaser, bro. Yeah. Yo, I'm Squints, man. They call me AKA the Mayor, see? Because I run, yo, I know everything that goes in and out. You know what I mean? For real, for real. Yo, if this is like a Scarborough shit, I represent the manzum from yeah. Scarborough, Dower, fucking yeah. Galloway, ah, oh, all of that. Where is it? Where else, guy? Where else, guy? He's still 400. Yeah, man, 400, man. Fuck, man. Mount right Vernon. Right you know what I'm saying? Up in the home projects, Teasdale. You know what I'm saying? Up yeah. With the manzum, you know. This is what's good right now. G shirts. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yo, let's see the back of your shirt, man. It's yeah, trapping the whole of Scarborough. Poor old guy right here. Like, we ain't like that, see, no one of the people don't know about Teaser because we're the money makers, see, we just stick here, got people coming in, we don't give a fuck, people come in, buy shit off of us, 
we don't have no problems, man, because no one knows, you know? So we keep this shit on a good, humble, quiet what tips. What happens when they disrespect? Yeah. Yo, man, see that tree over there? Ooh. Yeah, man. You see all this shit right here, man? You still see the candles that they burn every fucking summer and shit. You know what I mean? This all happened because... You can see the fire that we put on just to try to burn that shit off the tree. Sometimes we're going to have to cut it down fucking... Time to stop coming around here because, you know? This is how it happened, man. That's all candles and shit, man. I'm showing you. And these guys try to come back and hear the joke, man. See the Sri Lankan guys? Not to be racist, there's no Sri Lankan man on the flop. Teaser is where I live, so if you have a problem, you're more than welcome to come through. But those mans are weak, straight up, man. You ever hear about that, that see the brace shit? I see the brace summer school shit, but how black people in the fucking Sri Lankans? It took 100 of them versus 20 of us, and we still over conquered and shit like that. They may say that they won because there's more mans, but trust me, man. I, I heard about there. that. I heard about that. I was there. I got no nothing scar, on me. No scar, no. Nothing like soldier that. Soldier right here, B. Trust me, man. Soldier, man. I had some of my people from here come down there. We had mans from 400. We had some next mans from fucking, you know what I mean? From all over just to fuck up those Sri Lankan guys, man. No, we don't ramp down here, man. Even we got our own problem, guy. Crescent Town. Even that building right there. But you know what I mean? Those guys just keep it cool, man. Straight. Yeah. Tease the audition. No man might notice me, man. Yo, it's the realest shit, nigga. Look at this. Yeah. Fully loaded, motherfucker. Shit, there's someone right there, yo. Yes, yo. Come over here. Let that shit go. Let that shit go. Let that shit go. Let you. Too much activity going on today, but, you know, it's what this shit is about. Profiling the hood, man. The project, so. We gonna show you the rest of it, man. It's a big, you know what I mean? It's a big complex, so let's keep it moving. Yeah. Yes, big guy. We're done, no. I hear DVD yeah, thing there. DVD yeah. thing. Yeah, thing yeah man. I packed this, you know what I mean? Done, no. For one, for certain G's, certain man would have been turned over. You understand what I'm saying? Niggas like this. Go, so we pay homage. You know what I mean? CLC General. Uh. Five Star General. Captain, so just salute, man. <laughs> We are with a team away, cause we have we machinery, have we high greenery. Don't we make moves, I make news, I make you read in that greenery. Oh, what a mystery. No Babylon can come quest on me. Can't get the base and boy, tell you from the corner. I blow a smoke, but he's not marijuana. So niggas is living out here, and that's how I've been living, you know what I'm saying? A lot of them cats out there showed me the game a long time ago, man. So I've been always been up on game, you know what I'm saying? So that just shows you, don't, don't run up on us sideways, man. But this, at the end of the day, man, this is about the music. Fence be the grimiest kid, shove a gun in your face. Fucking, yeah, Palisades right now, you know? Big Motherfucking, Palisades. the landmark of Jane Finch for all you niggas who don't know. Anybody coming to Jane Finch got to spot the Palisade building, because, you know what I mean? Stands 34 floors. 34 floor. fucking, man. <laughs> ain't nobody can move in this bitch. Tell them where you live at, Palisade. Palisade, Palisade. Palisade. T block, you know where I'll be. Yeah. Jane and Finch, you know where I'll be. Yeah, T block. Done you know what I mean? My nigga M Jizzy. You know what I mean? Fuck all you cowards. T block. T block. You know that's the Come on, school face niggas right here. Come on, big. Come back. 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 Let's go. Let's go. Let's say it, yo. Can't fit, you know what I mean? One of the fucking Grammy's hoods, the one of the first hoods to do this shit, you know what I mean? That's how he gets down. Let's roll, Rush. Show you niggas what happened when he roll through my hood. Start from left to right, nigga. What up? Show him what niggas got. What up, black nigga? Blah. Tell me what it is, nigga. Nigga. That's the cow, nigga. Yeah, nigga. That'll rip your brim off, nigga. What we got? Who's that girl? Hey, what's up, Cardis? Fucking clean the block, nigga. That can come to my block, come. That's what happens, nigga. Clear the block, nigga. Clear the block, nigga. Word, nigga. All right, now, you in the bottom lane. South side, Jane Street. Is it Jane and Grand Ravine? Right now, you're around the block. Is it? About to take you around the outside of the street. Show me around the 307. 
Tell you around what's going on. Big, 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 uh, seven cool, bottom man. side Jane Street. You see a real shit. Niggas gotta keep tucking their shit all day around here. Shit. But anyway, anyhow, we're gonna get into it. So you got kids out here, you see it, so you know, gotta keep a peaceful block out here. There's enough kids out here. Still get rugged. But it still get rugged after hours, 12 o'clock and shit. We lock this shit down. Done no. I've been on this block, born and raised here, been living here from day one, you know. Seen it, seen it all on this hood, on this strip right here. Everything on this block right here I seen. You know, I seen how the game will mess you up coming up in your life, you know. Shit will mess you up because you just be a little nigga out here trying to get, do, go to school or whatever, you know, and cops coming in harassing you, you know, mess up your criminal record from your young, so that you consider the criminal from day one. Stay strapped if you flipping your weight, niggas want menace down so I'm gripping the eight, hollow tips in the tech, watch out when the bait, niggas gonna get plugged when the flag's on my face. Growing up here, a lot of shit, shootings used to happen out here all day on this strip right here, you know, all I'm gunfire, kids are all right out here when it's happening. Innocent kid, you know, Brianna, you know, rest in peace too, you know, and the lane too, you know. Yo, rest in peace, FB, you see it? You see it, FB, farmer, you see it, one of the realest out here, you see it, kept the block alive from day one, you see it. R.I.P. to them niggas, you see it. Niggas is foundation out there, you see it. Coming up around here was messed up, man, cops is on you. By the time, let me tell you, let me tell you how it works. By the time you even reach of age, like 12, 13, Cops is trying to put record. Cops is trying to put a record on you. They trying to put the record on you so they can identify you. They want 20 men standing there where they know every man there. If they don't know somebody there, it's a problem. You know, they want to come probably shake, and shake someone down for some ID or something. You know, they got an asshole book they ride around with. It's called the asshole book. You know, they just flip through pages. Like, everyone's face is in there. You know, they identifying you from that book, you know? Man, niggas keep coming close to us, man. This summer not gonna be nice. Not gonna be nice at all. Niggas gonna be get shot left, right, and center. Center. Even between the top left, top right. Oh here, oh here. Yeah. Yo, this my nigga right here. This is yeah, this is me right here. See how we stay, dog. Little inventions. Niggas don't even know about this. Jane and Finch, you already know how we do it. You know what I'm saying? In the hood, man. That's that Missouri slash Drip Detroit, Detroit you nigga. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just bombing in Detroit right now. About to go Wayne State, see what I could do. One year and out. It's term bitch, you see the fake in the stocks from homicide, mother's cry, cause they show no love. Fake niggas, they can get it when we throw more slug. I pull my heart out on this track. And take it in blood, but some niggas turn bitch to see the fake in the stuck from homicide, mothers cry, cause they show no love. Fake niggas, they can get it when we throw more slugs. See, I been on the grind, money stay on my mind. I got niggas in the pen and we still doing time. Shit's real, so you gotta watch out for the fake. Guns bang, niggas round another homie deceased. I pray to God for my niggas who rest in peace on the streets. It ain't a game, so don't take it for a joke. One day you could be here, the next day you get smoke up on my heart on this track, nigga. What a mistake, cock. So my nigga, look, you looking at the nickel plated right now, baby. You don't know, have a mistake, cock, though. Looking at the nickel plated. Show me the cat. Show me the cat. Have a mistake, cock. Try to just one second to get it. Fuck around on here. Big straps. BCCC, nigga. Holla. BCCC, nigga. Yo, I'm telling you, nigga. Any of you niggas fuck around, man. There's one phone call and it's done. Know what I mean? Check me and it's done. Know what I mean, nigga? Earth? We the young bangers. For all them niggas that be talking smack, you don't know who we are. We ain't calling no names. Mm -hmm. Fuck, we ain't being big people about it, though. We handle our business still. Know we wild ass niggas. Remember I heard you. Fuck, you fuck around, you get it. No. Look at that grill, nigga. Representing. You know what I mean? So now rest in peace to my nigga Ice. That's right. Representing up top, Jane and Finch, Driftwood. Yeah. So now Mimi and other players, see no, rest in peace to my nigga Ninko Blanco, the boss hog, you know what yeah, I mean? Man. No, no, the boss hog of it all. Right. Rest in peace, Ninko, man. I love you, man. Adversary, adversary the enemy. So, yeah, again, we're back in the Ville. This is where I lived right here. This is where it started out for me when I first moved here. It's 27 building. Um, 103, this is apartment 103. This is where I lived. Uh, with myself and my older brother, Pigeon. Real name's Larry, where they call him the original talking Pigeon. Um, basically, yeah, we moved here from Montreal. We came here probably like 82. And pretty much, first, you know, started off as a regular little kid, you know, doing a little kid thing, whatever, whatever. And 
started dancing, break dancing, you know what I'm saying, listening to hip hop music. Uh, I came here actually before listening to it, but then I really got into it. When I moved to Toronto, I got really, really into it because my cousins. Uh, and when I moved here, it was prevalent everywhere. Like everybody was doing their thing. Whether you're a dancer, whether you're a man on the mic doing reggae, you know, DJing, or you're an MC, everything was here. This is like the big boiling pot uh, of, of artists and, and people with talent. Uh, and every, everything, sports or anything like that. So yeah, pretty much this is where it started for me. When I first started rapping, I was with best friend, right? it's like my brother right here. You know what I'm saying? It's Sub like Vocal brother. Atomic, yep. AKA Tweaks, yep. Drama Bomb. It says, yeah, Blake's Pop. That's what we were back in the day. And we lived just like this, man. We were just like, his bedroom was there, my bedroom was right there. You know what I mean? That's his bedroom, my bedroom was right here. And that's how we, we, we could talk all night, all day. We kept communicating with each other. It's your boy Krim, yeah. AKA the Mega City Bronco. Bronco. You know what I'm saying? Here on the block, the Ville holding it down. You know how we do. You know what I'm saying? It's where the blunts get rolled, shorties get hollered at, money gets made, you know what I mean? Serious. What? Holding it down, doing our thing. That's how we do it, you know what I mean? You now we, we're on C block now, you know what I'm saying? Like my block, my spot right here. You know I'm saying it's why it came up the real block. You know I'm saying this, this was like the hot ends. It's like one of the hot ends. Niggas would chill here all day and just do their thing, you know? Get their grind on, stashing like all up in these spots. You name it. <laughs> She's come down, boom. Man's watching right there. Never catwalk. It's held it down here. That's B juice. Trust me, spend days here, B. We had it spend all days. covered. All covered. Spend all angles. Days. We had people watching right there for the cops right there. We had them watching right there. We had people on the eyes right there. We're gonna bring you to another all spot. Over. We had them covered on top. Everywhere. It's my life, man. Cheese. Don't forget about the cheese. Trust me. Everywhere in the place. Hold it down. Hold it down. You know, it's a hot block. Trust me. Why them come in, man's ready to go there. They had to put a gate up. Just to try to stop the hustle, they still couldn't even do that, you know what I'm saying? We're the second most drug infested area in Etobicoke, and that's a proven fact. From 1998. 1998 yeah. and beyond, 1997, going way back into time. This is a true story, we don't have time to lie, you know what I'm saying? This is a block that big people know about this stuff, you know what I'm saying? They call me creepy, and I've been around on this block. And these yeah. are the niggas, and they've been around on this block, and we've been doing dirt, and we do shit. You know what I'm saying? It's not like as if it's fake around here. Shit's real around here. Niggas will wake up and write 16 bars. A nigga will wake up and load up his clip. A nigga will wake up and do some serious shit just to come out here to just to make a dollar out of 15 cent on this block. You know what I'm saying? This block was like a team. There's no I over here. You know what I'm saying? You know how it gets up. ACGs, all kinds of yeah. shit. Yo, uh, let me tell you something. Let me tell you how serious it got for people who didn't make money. See me? I used to tell them. I used to vic. People on, on this come block. Up. Me, I would tell you, <laughs> I'll be so, right back, and I'm combo. gone with that. Just to put, so what do we do? Go behind, go up to the corner store and get a Chinese food combo. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody would be out here starving. You'd find a way. All right, y'all. This is a ball court. Um, I can't even tell you. I can't even go into words to tell you how long it took us to get this ball court. This was a, uh, a what we would we call a family community put together to get this ball court. Um, we used to have one back in the day when I, even before I moved here, but then it, they, you know, the, the building let it go, and this, the, the pavement was all rocked up, and you know, like, there wasn't a proper rims, there wasn't proper net, they didn't have like a proper ball court period. And these guys, everybody put together, made a petition, they finally, you know, we made noise, and they started answering back. But you know, this is this piece of the, the, the action right here, this is, this is hood ball right here, you know what I mean? I mean, neighborhood novel in the making right here. Yeah! Right here is where a homicide happened too, sorry they say that. Lost the man right here, he's from the hood. He got pitched off though from off the side of the strip right there and he got knocked right at the front of his door trying to get in from these badass niggas. But like how it goes in the game, you know what I'm saying? Anything but for Dash Wade and I guess that's what happened, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's my nigga and all, rest in peace, but that's what happens in the game, you know what I'm saying? Them niggas came way up here on the strip, caught the boy jumping through this fence right here trying to get into his house. By the time he's ready to get into his house, bam, bam, at least three shots, one of them hit him in his head, boom, there goes the nigga. Bad man running down the block, came through in the hood, 
Late trip in the night, you know what I'm saying? Homicides, real block, uh -huh. only to lie, true stories, you know what I'm saying? I check it out, throwback right now, taking us back to the 80s. Just so wanna big up, first off, wanna big up my older brother Pigeon, aka Larry, you don't know S yeah. Blank. Went through a lot of shit on this block too. Couldn't be here today with us, but yo, I wanna say, even this is the same yard, when you see my brother in the future, because he's damn straight, you're gonna see him. He's gonna have a certain look, you know what I'm saying? But this is what, this, this yard has gave him that look. And that changed my life. I'm not, I'm not lying to you right now. You hear that in, uh, you know, uh, we hear, you know, an adversary CD. You'll, we'll get to that sooner or later. But I talk about that in certain songs. He's in my inspiration along with my kids and my family, along with these guys. But that particular incident that happened in this yard with my brother changed my life big time. You know what I mean? But yo, throw back. That's goes out to my brother right there. Peace. I love you. Yeah. Done no. 15th building, you know what I'm saying? I've been in that building 15 years, you know what I'm saying? Got that shit on the back of my shirt, you know what I'm saying? You got 25 building over on that side, you know what I'm saying? All my niggas be all in these buildings, you know what I'm saying? 24 floors, don't get it twisted. We got 10 building over on this side, above the trees, you know what I'm saying? That building's a condo, you know what I'm saying? They all look the same, that one's a condo, don't get it twisted, you know what I'm saying? Live and direct in Black Creek. Parker, nigga. What up? G's up in this motherfucker, you know what I mean? G's up, all day, you nigga. Know what I mean? What up? Y'all niggas know what's up, man. Don't act stupid now, man. What the fuck's up? You know what I mean? Niggas don't get it fucked up. You know what I mean? Black Creek. We here, you know what I mean, nigga? Straight. G's up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They said it, nigga. G's up. Black Creek all day. Jane and Will know what the fuck's up. I gang bang all day. That's all I know, man. Because I'm a gunner, you know what I mean? Been in this shit all my Pete life. Gunner. You know what I mean? You're gonna get better though. Just get rich, man. Get that money play, you know what I mean? Get that money. South side of Jane, you know what I mean? Jane Wall, that's where we be at, you know what I mean? Black Creek all day. Young you know niggas, I mean? man. This is my young nigga right here, you know what I mean? My right hand man right here. I, I die with this kid right here, man. I'm rolling with this cat all day, every day. I watched this kid grow up from he was like fucking 10 years old, man. He's still here. Doing his thing, been through a lot of struggles, you know what I mean? A lot of jail. A lot of struggles, a lot of jail, a lot of homies and shit. Niggas in the pen, got kids, you know what I mean? Niggas dead. Real shit. Niggas is a father, man. Got kids. We got kids to feed, you know what I mean? And we got dreams. Dude wants to be one of the hillest rappers coming out of Toronto, you know what I mean? So we we ain't stupid. We know what we're doing. P gunner, remember that shit, ain't gunner. Chicho in black shit, you know what I mean? Gutter, real gutter, nigga. What the fuck is this shit? Someone tell us what the fuck we supposed to do, you know what I'm saying? Ain't no rec center. There ain't no exercising, you know what I'm saying? Right ain't now no we trespassing, nigga, and we live here. You know what I'm saying? We trespassing right Born now. Born violating on our, our own, own shit. shit. Straight up. Black Creek, this is the life. This is how I'm living, motherfucker. This is how we living. Straight up. Yo, the, the fuck the part nigga, about feed one bread, one butter, that's it, nigga. The fuck the part about this on? wreck, this wreck, wreck ain't owned by the government or nothing like. It ain't like that false staff wreck where, you know, one two fundraisers, the government's helping that shit. Nah, this is private property. One day these niggas wake up and say no fucking wreck. They ain't no wreck. It's been two years, nigga. How's my bro, guy? I like how you fuck. He never Quinn? talked to him. He's gonna get shanked up. I don't give a fuck. Quinn. <laughs> You guys don't know, my bro's locked up, you guys go see my bro, you guys don't tell me shit, yo. Yo, fuck you guys, man. Fuck you guys. I don't give a fuck no more. My bro's locked up, no one gives a fuck about me, I don't give a fuck about no one. Fuck you, Fuck you, too. You guys don't fuck, no one fucking cares. No one fucking knows, but fuck it, though, I don't care. Yo. I'm supposed to care, I'm supposed to have a fit now. Why are you upset right now? So I don't care. Why are you upset right now? I don't care, I have to do my own shit. I'm upset, I'm mad at myself. Okay, but well, I'm happy to hear you say that because that's who you should be mad at. Yo, big man, big man. Yo, that, gonna walk that's the same girl that traveled all the way to Hamilton to visit you. I don't give a fuck, day, right? I don't fucking care. Yeah. Big man, I yeah. said, yo, I wanna go see my bro. They lied to me and said they're not gonna see him. They said they had no ID. Her and this next guy that's driving. They said they're not, they, I said, yo, when you guys go see my bro, tell me, they're like, yeah. Then I bought them right before they're going. They're like, we're not going no more. Two twos, I go to direct, they come back and they tell me they went. So I'm like, fuck them. That's what's fucking hurting me right now. That's what's fucking hurting me right now. My fucking bro's locked up. Don't give a fuck. Let's go talk Don't to Fuck you. that, man. Don't fucking care. Oh, no. Fuck no, see, Jules, just cool. Everybody cares, man. That's a problem. You just got enough fight with this girl's. 
his brother's girl. Don't fuck her, man. She doesn't fucking care. I didn't fucking get to see my brother. Fuck the fuck. You're a young guy. You have lots of pride. See, him? don't worry about nothing. It's cool, man. I don't care what I have to fucking say to her. It's fuck cool. her, guys. It's cool, man. All right, just cool. Man. See? It's cool. There's no need to get upset. Like, all that, man. Come, come with me. You should have went home to begin with, man. It's all about choices for Freshie, but choices are something Burns believes he never had. Some of his earliest memories are of people being killed, and he can't remember a time when he wasn't angry. I had like a temper problem, you know what I'm saying? Like I always had, I had a really, really bad temper. I always used to beat up the little kids on the block, roam with the little kids, bully everybody, push them off the swings and jungle gyms and shit. I'm kicked out of all schools in Toronto because the teacher tried to fight me and I defended myself. And because I had a criminal record, no problem, there's a charge. Beat the charge, still can't get back into school. Education is not the fucking key. This was his first picture at one. Look at the hair. When he was one year old, I was so excited. What do you think, Yasmin, as you look at these pictures of him? Oh, well, to be honest with you, still love him, can despise him, but I was hoping things would be a much more better than it is now. That charge would be the first of five assault charges Burns would accumulate. He was in and out of juvenile detention for years. But last summer, something happened to Burns too that made him reevaluate. His half-brother was running on this footbridge when he was shot dead. Andre Burnett was once one of Toronto's most wanted criminals. On the afternoon his enemies finally caught up with him, Burns was close enough to hear the gunshots. I don't know, man. I, I felt kind of like fucked up in a way still. Like, I don't even know what, how to describe it. Like, it was rage, anger, like, I don't know, sadness, whatever, all mixed into one. It was also the realization that what happened to his brother could just as easily have happened to him. Wow, this one sounds nice stuff. Yeah, like Chucky, Burns now had a reason to think hard about his life, to reconsider where it was taking him. If Chucky was going to try to be good, well, Burns was prepared to give it a shot, too. What's the point of going to jail all the time, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be a low life living a fucking like 20 something, living with my mama and shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, fuck, after a point like, you live that shit, it was fun when you're young, but the reality is this, you could get killed, you know what I'm saying? He is home, I'm saying his bitch is there. Oh, cause his mom's probably driving it. His bitch is home, I didn't even fucking talk to that guy. Fucking yeah, but you know his back room? She sent me, she tried to look, hook me up with a friend, right? Oh, that yeah, she said yeah, was yeah. her cousin? Yeah, yeah. And I fought the girl the same day at the back room and tell me why she watching me fuck her friend. Yeah, right. I swear to you, she was watching me fuck her friend. Like, I was getting uncomfortable still because my, my ass was showing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like walking out like, yo, what are you watching she's me watching? for? Yeah, she's watching me. Like, she just there because she, I guess she like couldn't. from the front? Yeah, where, oh, where the fucking yeah, computer yeah. was. But I'm like, yo, all these girls are people. Real people. May know a little bit about, about the whole scene to tell us how effective uh, any government measures might be. Choo choo choo. Is this guy making love on my phone? Hmm? Does anybody know? Pick up. Yeah. yeah, if he's making uh, love on the phone. Is it costing you a lot of minutes? No, no, no. no. It's free right now, oh, still. Okay, okay. Well, oh, yeah. you're just doing business. Yeah. No, I didn't. No, no, no. I just want to know if he's making love on the phone so he can answer my, my fucking my other calls that's coming in. Uh oh, we're gonna get shot. Oh, uh, everybody, you see, you see? That's that's the prank, yo. It's the prank. <laughs> we do that way. We do that to almost every cameraman that comes around. Oh my god. You just stuck uh, down and shit? We are joking. I'm wearing a vest. You serious? Well, I took it. I told you that. Yo, it would be, be believable. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even think you're lying still. With a lot of things that I see, remember, yo, I forgot who came, which one of the news people that came, and then I was playing around with a laser pointer. 
Remember when that lady got scared? Okay, so they're having this meeting tomorrow. Um, what do you think of, of something like that? Uh, they're trying to solve what they consider a very bad problem, and yet you've had people uh, shot on Young Street now, innocent people. Well, what do you guys think of that? Well, I'm not racist still, but personally, if you look at it in the homicides that happened, uh, the good majority of the people that died was black people, you know what I'm saying? Like black actual males and black... They never really made a big commotion out of that until it started getting close to their areas, and I guess... Because I, I like rest in peace. I don't know the girl still, but honestly, she yeah, I don't she believe should. that she should have got hit by a bullet, just like nobody else should get hit by a bullet. But they only made it a big media thing until a white girl got hit. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not. There's no race between. I live in a in a in an area that's multicultural. You know what I'm saying? There's Asians, there's Somalians, there's Africans, there's Black, there's everything that's here. White people, Italian, they live their life. We're comfortable. You know what I'm saying? But the fact of the matter is, you don't care what's going on in the hood. Because it went to a most civilized area where you never thought it would happen is when you guys want to do something. Like, it's not going to stop it. Paul Martin says he wants to pull a, a ban on guns. You, why didn't she say he wants to put a stop on poverty? Why aren't there certain places that they don't have good community centers? They don't have a place to chill at when it's after school. Like, you're not stopping main issues. There's kids that don't even go to school. So where are their time focused to? Other than the streets. You know what I'm saying? Gang banging. Like, you ain't saying, oh, I want to put a stop to that. But you're saying you're going to stop handguns. So it's going to stop a man from rolling around with a shotgun or an M16. Some hype, then you know what I'm saying? And a handgun, like they only mad because it's coming close to home, and they're realizing that the guys who are shooting out is a rootless. They don't care; they're just out to kill. So, Chucky, the, you know, all the politicians are saying it's a problem with guns. Yeah. How easy is it to get guns? It's easy. That's that's all they could say. You know what I mean? He's banning handguns. I thought handguns, handgun laws in Canada are already like super strict. You know what I mean? It's already that hard to get a gun. So what's the point of banning handguns? You know I mean they're already pretty much banned. You know what I mean? Actually. So, it's not stopping people from getting guns, you know what I mean? Okay, what about the, um, the whole draw of, of gangs? I mean, what are the gangs? What do they do? What do they give the people who are members of the gang? Honestly, gangs, like, alright, the terminology of gangs, you guys are going to understand. Everything is a gang. If you're in a group and you chill together and me and you are friends or whatever, that's a gang. Police officers is the biggest gangs. Police and the law and the government is the biggest gang in the world because they roll in an operation and their operation is to take down and knock any other hustles. That's their hustle, to knock anybody else's hustle. They're the biggest gangs. They're allowed to have guns. They're allowed to shoot with reason. They're allowed to use a, their, any force that they want against anybody that they want. So like, they're the gangs. When you really look at it, Every hood is going to be a gang, if you look at it. Whether it's not even blood or crypt It's like you live in a hood, they define you into a one place and a one area. You're going to be like that, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not a matter of a name or a rep. Like, if me and a whole bunch of friends chill together, that's a clip. That's automatically a gang. Automatically, because you're going to say, oh, there's a gang of people over there. There's a group of people over there. That's a gang, you know what I'm saying? Like, you have to use the terminology of the gang. We do not glorify what we use as a gang. We don't say, hey, we're the Toronto Police from 31 Division. You know what I'm saying? That's a gang. Because you, like, you have a name right there framed for you, you have an outline, and you have a uniform that portrays the name that you guys are following, you know what I'm saying? What about the whole idea that gangs are on the street and they're shooting on, on, you know, on the street in broad daylight? So, yeah, same with police officers. Police officers do the same thing too, you know what I'm saying? Like, the fact of the matter is, we don't own gun stores. The hood don't own gun stores. We don't make guns, you know what I'm saying? The guns don't get manufactured to us, you know what I'm saying? Like, you guys understand, we don't have a Smith & Wesson company. We don't make Uzis. We don't do all of this, like, you know what I'm saying? The one thing that I don't understand about politicians and officers, they say that it's a bad thing, but they wouldn't be here if it wasn't for us. They wouldn't make money, and there wouldn't be no media attention on them if there wasn't nothing going on. They, they feed off of our crime rate. They feed off of everything that happens, whether it's good or bad, you know what I'm saying? So, like, when I hear them talk about, oh, we need to stop this, yeah, it needs to stop still, because honestly, I think that with all the shootings that's going on, a man shouldn't even be shooting the next man. If anything, shoot after officers. They don't want to knock down everybody's hustle and don't give a crap who you are, whether you're black or white. You know what I'm saying? I see white guys get arrested. I see Chinese guys get arrested. I can see black people get arrested. But it's officers, you know what I'm saying? I think the gun violence should stop. So I'm not being a hypocrite because I know how hard it is in the streets and I know certain things always happen for a reason. But the fact of the matter is, police officers do twice as worse. They need us. They need our crime rate to make dollars. They need it. And they tell us straight when they come down here after they see a homicide. We don't give a fuck. We make money off you guys anyways. Like, come on. How hard is it for young people in whatever neighborhood to, to stay away from the attraction of the streets? Well, think about this. When you come from an area that's filled with poverty, you come from a broken home, you know what I mean? You hardly interact with your own family at home, you know what I mean? 
who are you gonna go to and to interact with? You know what I mean? <laughs> like I, I grew up without a father. You know what I mean? So people that were older on the streets were, you know what I mean? They they raised me basically. You know what I mean? They showed me love. Took you in. And obviously I'm gonna look up to them. You know what I mean? And that's what it is. And were you both involved in it, what they what the police call street gangs? Were you both involved in that? I'm I'm what police officers call a career criminal, regardless of the circumstances. I could just be walking on the street and hey, I, you know what it is. When you're on the streets, you're not even much of a gang member. You're not even a gang banger. You're a liability. You're a liability of anything. Police officers don't even have to have a reason to pull you over here. To what they say is, we consider you guys liabilities. Yeah, you might be walking now. You might not have a gun in your pocket. But two minutes later, you might have something. They don't know it for sure, but that's what they assume. They don't come up to a guy for a reason and say, hey, we're going to pull you over because we got a phone call that you might be suspicious. You're walking on the street. I'm gonna pull you over. They did that. They do that to everybody. Like every single day, every single time. Like you're a liability in a hood like this. So, you know what I'm saying? But aside from that, what 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 do you guys do, or what can you do to prevent your little brother or your little cousin from getting involved in this? Well, like I said, all my little cousins and siblings and every little person that's around me know that I've been into situations with police officers and been kicked out of school, so I can't go to any school in Toronto. And I'm pretty sure I always tell my little bro and my little sister to stay in school because believe me. If you want to be a garbage man, you need a diploma. You know what I'm saying? Like, honestly, school, you need that. And honestly, what I look at it, like, the government knows that you need all of that, and they use it as a leverage. You know what I'm saying? They use it as, like, boom, this is the string that we have on this person. If you don't have school, you don't got nothing. Yeah. If they really cared about it, they would say, yo, I want more people to chill in school. I want more people to, you know, live proper. I want these guys to do it. Like, they don't care. Like, if you kick a person out at 14 years old, out of school, all schools in Toronto, what do you want them to be? If you know that you can't get a high-priced jobs without a high school diploma, what do you want him to be? A criminal? Have, have you guys ever been arrested? Oh, of course. Numerous times, man. Ask any Numerous. police officer who I am or who this guy is. They know me. They shot down my bro. They know my history. They know everything. What, what have they arrested you for, Chuck? Uh, what have you been charged Well, mostly with? weapons possession, illegal gun possession, and uh, recently narcotics. So, yeah. So, any time did they... No, I spent like three days, four days. That's it. But this guy, this guy right here, spent six months. So yes. one, of, one, of the, one of the things that they're they're considering is that if anybody, you know, it's one of the new things they're talking about. Anybody has a gun, is arrested for you know using a gun or being involved in any sort of gun crime, it's going to be tougher to get bail. Is that a deterrent? It's been that way from time. It's been that way from time. It's just they don't understand. The whole process of everything, like really and truly, they, the reason why they're toughening now is because they let all the wrong people out, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like if you got a guy that went down and he gunned down a person in broad daylight, you're not going to want to give him bail. But yeah, you're going to give a guy who fucking, who's been out there, who had a gun on him, got tackled by an officer, seen, fighting an officer with a machine, you're going to let him go. Like honestly, like stuff like that, you got to look at it like this. You as a man or anybody, a judge as a man should be at the level to say, okay, this guy is here for a violent gun crime, Ray, 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 Ray. You don't check his history and know where he's coming from. How can you judge him? And then you want to bail him, and then if he does something like wrong, whatever, whatever, you want to blame him and make it look like he's a menace to society. Yo, we live in a hood. You guys forget, by the end of the day, when all you guys go to sleep in your nice, cozy beds, we're in the same area where gunshots every day. You know my options when I wake up in the morning? That I could either die or I can either go to jail. For what reason, you don't know, but that's the life. You know what I'm saying? You keep it like that. That's the mentality that you keep, and you try to wise and better from that. The people around here who, who have seen you know, the problems going on for years, do, do they want, do they look at things as being short-term solutions or long-term solutions? And what do you think those... There's no solutions. There's no you know, solutions. I'm just trying to get by day by day. It's not even thinking about a week from now. I mean, it's how I'm going to see tomorrow. You know what I mean? And it, it's, it's messed up, but that's the mentality that, that it is. You know what I mean? Does it make it better if, if they put more cops, if they make it tough to get bail, if they try to prevent okay. people from joining gangs? You see what I don't understand? Uh, this is what I'm going to tell you, okay? Because I spend time in jail. So it's not even like I'm one of those people that know about crime and like never spend a day in jail. Like honestly, half of the shootings and beef that goes on is from such an uh, incident that happened in jail. You know what I'm saying? They cage, you, they cage the criminals like animals. They put you two to a cell. And they don't care where you're from, they don't care what hood you're from, they don't care, you're just a number in there. So the fact of the matter is, I'm meeting somebody that I don't know. Me and him's going to kick off inside the bing. We don't, nothing settles within there. Unless you're either dead or you got rushed. I'm going to hold that to feelings and I'm going to say, hey. So then if I walk now and I see that guy in the street, that's going to be problems. I'm going to say, hey, that guy kicked my ass in the bing. 
And that's like, you guys put people in jail, but it's like, you don't put the people who need to do the time from the people who don't. Like, you know what I'm saying? And regardless of the circumstances, I would even wish jail on my enemy. I would not even wish anybody to go to jail. Nobody, honestly, except rapists and kidnappers who kidnap children and shit. They should go to jail. But other than that, nobody should go to jail because that's a bad place to be. It changes up your whole mind frame. Like, I think if you get arrested, the person's not going to want to come out rehabilitated and say, hey, I never want to do this again. He's going to be fucking goddamn pissed. He's going to be mad. He's going to want to do something back. He's going to want to cause more crimes. He's going to want to make sure that, hey, I don't go in for no soft stuff. I want to go in for something big. You know what I'm saying? And that's what it starts from jail. Like jail starts the, the whole like, process of crime. Because once they process you and you get arrested the first time and they have you in the asshole book, that's it. All they have to do is just run upon you every day, check your conditions and arrest you. And you know, we're doing our thing for Brampton, Toronto and Canada, trying to put Canada on the map. But we got to give it to our good friend. Um, he's been doing his thing for Canada for a long time now with his music, so. Hey, you little ugly motherfucker. Okay, I scorched out that mirror. They shaking my mirror. Time's talking HD. Can't speak, I'm no clear. <laughs> Yo, I'm fucking here with the coolest niggas in the world. And I want everybody, because they're going to be there too. I want everybody to come out to my show. October 6th at Wrong Bar. If you're not there, you're a faggot. <laughs> yeah. So you know what it is, October 6th, we're going to be there for entertainment. Lane's going to be there, he's going to shut it down, so just come through. Dog, it's going to be crazy, dog. Like, crowd surfing, bitches smoking, shit. You're Niggas, really, white people, you're really all kinds of crazy it. shit. I'm Niggas gonna walking there, and he's going to be there. We don't know who he is. You don't even got to know who he is, dog. He's going to be there. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. You know me? October 6th, Rock Park. Toronto. My nigga Omar Epps is gonna be there, nigga. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Congo, be there, nigga. Hold <laughs> on, oh, no, shout out to our light man, though. Too. Oh, <laughs> man. Be there, too, be there, too, bro. Give Jay some love, yo. <laughs> so, you know, come on, October 6th. We all gonna be there, nigga. You already feel the hype, you already feel how it is, so be there. Support. Uh,